what up, what up? I need, I need that sports, sports encyclopedia. We U.S. Steve Kim. Got trend in the cut. Yeah, yeah. Where you at, man? Where you at, man? Where you at, man? In the gym shooting, I'm Durant. You ain't shooting, John Moran. Darnell is the Ball State legend. I'm the Warren Central High School legend. Proven with a reliable source, straight from the mouth of the horse. Smitty and JB. JB and Smitty from West Coast to Yost. I love talking, talking ball. It's, it's nice to connect with with guys that, that are like-minded and, and just are real and genuine. Better stay in your lane. Hop, hop and get you you are fucking insane. You, dude, what? You just will not give this guy his power. What is, up? What is wrong with you? Oh, you must have thought I was a bitch. You got to get back. To letting the baby cry a little bit to see if they can soothe themselves. That's a bar. Issues get pressed so past it, don't get sacked like bags and back it. Smitty and Jason Brown killed it, yeah, it's a rap. We what the game's been missing, we switched it and filled the gap. I identified him after his third fight, and so that guy should be a star. I'm so proud of, you know, the show, bro. With the gas, Smitty and Jason Brown. What up, what up, what up? It ain't Friday the 13th, but Jason always strikes on Fridays. That's why I got the Friday the 13th shirt on today. It is free game Friday right here on the Coach AB Show with Big Smitty. He'll be joining us here in a second. Bills Mafia, where you at? Bills Mafia, stand up. It is make or break for Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills and the Mafia. You guys got to win or it's just it's, it's your windows done. Your windows closed, Buffalo Bills Mafia. Stand up. You guys made some more cuts. It's make or break time. You got a new OC. You got Joe Brady over there dialing it up. He did all right last year. And now they have to find a run game. They have to figure out how to keep Josh Allen upright and balance the offense. So it's not 90 percent Josh Allen, 10 percent everyone else. They got to balance it out. They cut White on defense, Poyer on defense, and their center, Morse, was also cut. They got a, they got some things to do. Changes are coming in Buffalo. They also are, uh, they're all also in discussion with Mitch Trubisky to come back and back up um, Josh Allen. So, lot breaking, lot to break down on this Buffalo uh, team today. We're gonna dive into Buffalo and the Bills Mafia. All things Josh Allen and. Uh, See what they can do in the run game free agent. There's a lot of good re- running backs out here. A lot of good free agents in the run game. We're going to dive into it um, with our main man, our Naptown's finest, our Far East Sider, our Ball State legend, our Fox Sports working, our AR5 loving, Lamar Jackson defending, LeBron hairline having, co-host extraordinaire, Big Smitty. Welcome, my man. Clap it up. Hey, Big Smitty want to be a model. What's going on, y'all, man? It's Friday. It's, a, it's today the 13th? Nah, it ain't, but I had to wear it. Boy, you had me nervous. I'm about to go lock the door and, and shut these windows it down, man. It ain't next week either. It ain't. I don't know when it is. Next time it is, though, I'm going to wear I got another Friday 13th shirt. Uh, shout out to Dr. Joey in the crib. Dr. Joey! Dr. I ain't Joey seen Dr. Now. Joey since Lucy, Baby Girl, Brian Case, everybody in the house, Daniel, Casey. We all in the building today. Sean Waffle, Jack. Good, Jerry. I see you, Jerry. Good morning. Ada. We got a lot of females in here today. A lot Look of females. It's Friday. Look, hold on. Look. Here we go. Watch this. Watch this. When I pull the two chains out, they go crazy. Watch this. One, two. <laughs> it's over. It's over. The show's over. Who's they? <laughs> they. We all listen. What's, what's understood don't need to be explained. JB, you know who they. You from the hood like me? You know who they is. Bohemian Grove. <laughs> no, I'm, just, I'm just saying. We know it's, it's it's different days depending on, on who we talking about, what we talking about. But you know who they is. Eddie said you got fake chain on. Where you say that? Wow, Eddie. 
I ain't gonna get another brother. Eddie just coming. Eddie just be saying Eddie's super bipolar. One day he loves us, one day he's pissed, one day he's he, Eddie he's a weird. One Eddie day he's ten dollars in. Like, come on, bro. Eddie a weird motherfucker. I gotta be real. Yeah, my chains are real too. This right here is what you call a, a Franco chain right here, man. Bought this last year, you know, a couple stacks, nothing too crazy. Shout out to my drawer, Jason the drawer in downtown LA, man. Real. You can bring you can bring a little test and test this whole thing. That shit ain't gonna go off or nothing. <laughs> That shit is so like feminine to me. <laughs> what having a two a necklace? Just talking about it. Just talking about checking it. If I see a person check the thing oh, with that little meter thing, yeah, I almost want to slap shit out of somebody. I almost want to go Charles Barkley on on on, on somebody a brother wearing a Trump shirt. <laughs> <laughs> JB, I was really thinking about this last night, bro. We got to do that boot camp with you. Like we got to get four yeah. kids at your house. And like, cause I, I had it, I don't know why yesterday I was like ran, randomly daydreaming and I was like, damn, that shit would be hilarious. Like just imagine you walking through the fucking house. We got a cameraman like backpedaling in front of you and you're like just being yourself. You got somebody in the backyard fucking like uh, putting down cement on the ground and you're like, what the fuck, bro? You, you're not doing this shit, right? You got another motherfucker over here. Uh, I don't know. Painting the wall, like just four different kids doing different shit, and they're all fucking up, at least to your standards. And you just we should you know, do it. We gotta do it. We we need four kids though. That's the thing. Like, who going who is willing to send their kids to coach JB? That's the really the real question right there. I don't know. Wait up, what's going on here? I can tell you more about it if you need. Me and Emmett were there on the first year program. I heard a lot more bullshit over there, especially they don't have they still don't have a trainer. Oh, Lincoln University. Okay. Uh Smitty, we got a lot going on. The Bills Mafia is today in the discussion. The Buffalo Bills making a lot of moves. But first of all, we gotta get you a quote of the day. Um they are going to uh we're gonna dive into the quote of the day brought to you by Bet Online. IG, I'll be back. What up, what up, what up, man? The real Coach JB here for the Coach JB Show with Big Smitty. We got a proud new sponsor, of course, for the second part of the year, and that's Bet Online. Continue to be your number one source for all basketball wagering needs, including pro and college hoops throughout the year. March Madness is here. Join us every Monday and Friday with Jeff Nadu as we will pick them and up to minute odds, stats, and trends. You can follow your favorite team's path to the playoffs with in-game live betting contests and all the best player props. Experience the world's best wagering platform anytime from your desktop to your mobile device. Head on over to Bet Online today. Become part of the team and remember to use promo code BELIEVE, B-L-E-A-V, for 50% off plus welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts. Peace. Where the game starts. Smitty, my boy, uh, PP, Pat Pre, they just teed off in Hong Kong. Um, what? Well, a little while ago, they teed off. Uh, Pat checked me at like three this morning, our time, and was just talking shit. And I was like, good luck today. I'll go get it. And, uh, I was like, fuck, I forgot about the time. <laughs> Right. Yeah. They were at the tee off at three hour time. I mean, um, he was already up anyway, though, because you don't never sleep. Man, don't remind me about my parlay on, on prize picks. Uh, T mix them up. Come on, man. I'm so close to cracking this thing. It's we keep I'm, getting right here every time, JB. Like this close. You know, I shouldn't I should have known because I, I totally blew my own ideology and philosophy when I when I went under on Luca. I should have known, dog. We're in a soft, pussified era. I should have known they're gonna let Luca do what they do. They're not gonna play D on him. They're not gonna body him. They're not gonna. They're gonna let him get five triple doubles in a row or whatever it is. I should have known better. That's on me, JB. You know, but hold on, JB. I can't put that all on you, bro. Because listen, I'm. I was right there with you, and like he's been getting triple double, triple double, triple double. But I just assumed, and this to my detriment, to my fault, that all right, at some point he's gonna be a little off, like a little off. And when I say off, like he still have a good game, but not I think that the number was like 53 and a half or some shit. So I'm like, come on, like he ain't gonna get that again. 
I, I, I discounted Luca's greatness. Also, like you said, the rules today, people score a lot, a lot more points. But I looked at his averages against that team. He usually, he usually don't go off like that. So he did. First half, he was horrible. I'm like, oh, I'm good. Second half, my fucking triple double. It seems like every time we bet on on somebody, that's the game where they want to be complete opposite of whatever the norm is. Like I don't get it. And then I was tripping because I was like, oh, I'm about to lose Edwards' bet because Edwards gets hurt. They walk him off the full court, and then he come back and go off. And I'm like, oh, cool. So I won that part. He a dog. We're right there, dog. I'm right there. I'm about to win this prize pick thing. Just stay with us. Just stay with us. Prize pick. Hit us up. Uh, keep following us. A lot of people were hitting me up on Twitter last night, dog, because they were like, damn, your, your prize pick's about to hit, coach. I'm like, shit, it's about to hit, it's about to hit every motherfucking night. <laughs> <laughs> it's always about, about to hit. About to. Uh, Smitty, quote of the day. Um, we did a commercial like eight minutes ago. We ain't even did the quote of the day. Right. You will true. You will never truly be satisfied by your work until you are satisfied by your life. Damn. 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 Quote of the day. Quote of the day. You'll never be truly. You'll never be truly satisfied by your work until you are satisfied by life. So you gotta uh, be satisfied by life before being satisfied by work. But I feel like the work is a large part of, such from a man, or at least the satisfaction on life. If a man's not bringing home the bacon, because that's kind of what we're trained to do, molded to do, you're going to feel a little bit down on yourself. That's interesting. Yeah, that's nah, because you ain't working, though. You, most cats are doing it working a job, not a career. Huh. Right, right, right. Let's be, let's be clear. It's huh. different. Um. You look a little funny today, JB. Cope 117. Pause. Huh. I guess I'm going to say pause on that. Yeah, I would say pause. Because why are you, why you on here looking at Jay? Why are you on some... You got all these women in the chat, and you over here looking at JB. Because <laughs> I, sh- I shaved, and then my, my fucking clippers broke, and I shaved too low. I even uh, noticed that. See, the girl saying that is cool. Right. Hater. Why other, shit on weird. You? other shit weird as motherfucker. Um, I like booty, I'm not. I'm still got some. It's still here, but I don't like baby booty like that. I don't get baby booty. Um, what you call Eddie, baby, baby booty? Eddie, I'm going to block you. Shut the fuck up. So, Eddie, baby, we'll let you call in. God, leave. But if you say it again, you ain't never calling in ever. If you ever, say it one more never. time, if, if I see one more call, let me call in, you're never getting fucking called in ever. Ever. Say it again. I dare you. Say it again, Eddie. Well, All these women, we got three or four. <laughs> John, hey, well, John, let, turn that three or four to mo. Flip it. Be a hustler. Turn that four to eight. If you a hustler like that. Well, Appreciate that, Lucy. Adorable, JB. Appreciate that, Lucy. I'm Are right. we not the best good-looking? Like, Appreciate you, Jada. Hold on, no, Jada, talk about no, We might be the no, – Oh, no, shit. <laughs> we might be the best-looking host, co-host duo – in podcast fucking history. I don't know. We we at least top five, JB. Uh, Me alone is bringing us top five. And you you a good looking brother, JB. You you old school, but you keep it clean. I ain't no hater. A man, a man can say that. You keep it clean. You ain't no, you know what I mean? The girls like you. We top let me five. Think, let me think. Let me look at the two. Let me look at the, the host. Let's see. So when when your old your your counterpart, Skip and Shannon, nah, we beat them. We got them. Stephen A and Shannon now we beat them. Easy money. Shannon got, you know, horse horse mouth. We got we could beat we beat Mason uh Cameron. I uh, Cameron, I think we beat them. Yeah, yeah. Can be can be clean though. That's one thing that me and you, we don't get dressed up. It's f- f- four in the morning. We don't put suits on shit like that. If we want if we did that, it'd be a whole nother level. That'd be a yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, shit. I mean, all the hoes in here. It'd be it'd be uh, unfair almost, really. Yeah, all the hoes in here. Yeah. Um uh, let me see. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. We got. I think I'm looking at the top of the head. Like, no, I'm almost said busting with the boys. Oh hell no, nah. we way cleaner than them. Them are like goofballs. Ain't <laughs> even a conversation. <laughs> I didn't even want to go and mention them. Right. Uh, <laughs> Smitty, I don't know. We're gonna talk some Bills Mafia here, but uh, I got a poll question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did, did you got a? Never mind. Go. I got a poll question for you, real quick, before Smitty says so. Would you rather be with someone 
Why do I keep saying Who that? is so amazing in bed that every single time it's a life changing experience, but the rest of the time you're in a screaming fight or have decent sex twice a month and the rest of the time your partner is like your best friend. That's the longest poll question ever, but in layman's terms, I'm going to break it down. Would you rather have amazing sex every time you have sex with your partner, but the rest of the time you in a almost fighting, or would you have decent sex and have your best friend be your girl or your wife? That's actually easy for me. I, I, I think you go decent sex and be your best friend because like, uh, uh, listen, we all love sex. We know how, we we know how great it is, especially as I mean, men and women. We all love it, but men, you know, we I feel like we're more sexual, especially at the younger age. Women kind of turn into that little little bit more when they get older. But at the end of the day, what I'm also learning too, as you get older, it's so much more stuff that's I would say in a relationship that's more important than that. Although that is a, a very important factor to me, sex isn't like at the top of the of the list when you're thinking about the importance of relationship you need somebody who's like you know emotionally available who you can talk to and open up about anything whether that's stresses of the day work things you're going through health somebody who's gonna just have your back through it all it's nothing like having like a true partner who's gonna be there for you for anything good bad ugly things going on with the family and to me if you have that true best friend who can who can be that partner to me that's more important than just amazing sex and also and, and tell me if you, if you guys think i'm wrong i think they kind of correlate too like to me having a best friend who you fuck with mentally and spiritually and, and emotionally that actually make the sex better we ain't 19 where it's just like oh fuck titties oh ass oh like ment- the mental part as a man is very important to make everything work the right way and make everything proper so that, that's that's my knowledge, Jamie. But what do you think? Because you're making that facial expression. <laughs> I was hoping I didn't have to answer. Nah, you uh, put it on you. I just uh, huh? I just hit it good. Mm-hmm. I ain't trying to sit down. Mm-hmm. I'm hitting good, and then I don't want to see you anyway. That's the thing about it. I don't know you. You know that? Keep it real. When you bust that nut, you everything come back to like, oh fuck, I gotta do this bitch's mouth. <laughs> so okay, uh, what is you know, it about when men when men bust one like it, like your your mind instantly changes? Like whatever you whatever it was before that moment is like totally different. Like you was over. mad, you happy. If you were sad, like you you opposite whatever it was right before that. Like, Motherfucker don't even talk no more. Motherfucker don't even talk no more. Motherfucker was just telling her how bad she was. He all it, it, the dick hard. Motherfucker, man, you bad girl. Motherfucker, bust that man. Motherfucker, get off me. <laughs> leave me alone. <laughs> hey, I'm about to leave. <laughs> if go. You leave it or I'm leaving. <laughs> I gotta go. Um, uh, uh, it's oh. fucked up, man. It's That's called up. PNC. That's a real yeah, thing real in me. Talk, PNC though. is a real thing. Real Post talk, clear. It's real talk. Um, I don't know if you watch. I know we don't do politics, dog, but I'm going to be honest. I watched that Joe Biden State of the Union thing. The only reason I watched it, I was drinking it in the lounge, smoking a stick, A.E., and I was like, let me turn this thing on. And then uh, she was like, why are you going to watch this? I go, I don't know. Fuck it. Let's see what it's up. I was like, I want to make sure this motherfucker don't declare war. I, I want to make sure because I didn't know why he was addressing. I was like, let me see. I'll make sure this motherfucker don't declare war around this motherfucker. So I'm watching this dude. Dog, the incompetence is outlandish. I don't know what to say with this cat. Like, he makes us look so weak and incompetent. Along with him calling out Lincoln Riley, the head coach at USC, and saying that he was dead. It blew my fucking mind. I posted a tweet and an Instagram post of this. And this shit blew up, Smitty. (laughs) Joe Biden said Lincoln Riley's dead. No, he didn't. (laughs) I'd be a winner. Not really. I... (laughs) 
Lincoln, Lincoln Riley, an innocent young woman who was killed by an illegal. That's right. But how many of thousands of people being killed by illegals? To her parents. That bitch right there, I don't really know much about it, a majory green or whatever. That bitch is a gangster though. I don't I don't care. Like that bitch was in all Trump shit. <laughs> She's the one that handed uh Biden the, the fucking thing to read. Oh, it was her who did it? She handed him the fucking the the button. I so, didn't watch none of this shit last so I, I'm, I'm all I'm all learning this right now on the fly. Uh, the cat is incompetent. It I I'm looking at it embarrassed second hand. Yeah, his speeches give me second hand embarrassing when he when he talks. Yeah, and that's our leader and POTUS and our. I'm like, nah, man. This the, the country sitting back, probably Russia sitting back smoking big Cubans. Like, oh yeah, this, these motherfuckers vulnerable. I I don't know. I thought last night was a joke, and then Kamala Harris, all she did was squats all night. That bitch was sitting down, standing up, sitting down, standing up, clapping every time. All she did was about a hundred squats. I'm like, dog, what does she do? Now, to be fair, I don't know if there's any vice president that's ever did shit. Um, and I'm about yeah. to say, I don't think, I mean, I, I watched that years before, but correct me if I'm wrong, they, like, she's not supposed to speak last night, right? Like, that's not, or is that? They, she stands behind them. And, yeah, uh, just out of respect. It's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Behind them. Uh, I was making sure they didn't declare war. I was drinking, smoking a stick, chilling. But yet this administration, dog, this is the crazy part. This administration, Smitty, if you didn't hear last night, Bailey, you have uh, when uh, when old boy uh, Stephen Nukai stood up and got kicked out of the fucking deal and arrested, Smitty. I don't know if you know who this is. Stephen um, Nukai is a fallen Marine who passed away in Afghanistan. And this guy, the daddy was there, stood up and started screaming out at Biden last night, for his son's name. And uh, they kicked him out and arrested him. Mm, Do we have it, Bailey? Uh, they arrested him. Damn. Yeah, they arrested him during the thing. Um, I wonder if they like had him to just take him out type shit and let him sit in the car and because how you gonna arrest somebody for just screaming out something? Now like, what's the charge? <laughs> he, he screamed out his kid's name. He screamed out the name um, of the kid, and then the crazy part is we got twenty million illegals are here and they're fine. They're okay to be here. <laughs> That's what the crazy part is. They're not only are they okay to vote, they're okay to get eight thousand dollars a fucking each. Of our taxpayers' money, you're going to get free health care. They're going to get a license and an ability to vote, a free cell phone. I don't know, Smitty. I've never seen America like this, and I don't care who, right, red, blue, right, left, liberal, conservative. I don't, I'm not either of them. I'm an independent thinker. I've never seen us this incompetent and bad. I've never seen us. Nah, not even close. I've never seen this country look that fucking incompetent. I don't know what we're doing. I think it's like a scam. It's got to be like a dream. I feel like I'm in a bad dream. I'm wake up and be like, all right, I know we're not just letting everybody over the border. <laughs> JB, do you feel like do you feel like your life has ever changed personally though from any election, any president? No, do you feel like no. JB's individual life? Because like no. when when people say like right now you're saying like I ain't never seen a country this bad. I hear no. you. I hear you. But like how how is your personal life being affected? Whether it's Biden, Trump. Obama, Bush, Bush, uh, Clinton, like to at least I'm speaking personally to this point of my and I'm young, obviously. So you know, I, my my adult years is a bit, it's a lot less than yours to this point, of course. So like for me, no matter who the president has been, my personal life, at least to this point, has not been affected in a major way. Where I'm like, damn, like since Biden been in every this this that and the third chain, or since Trump been in, it's it's like. My everyday life is just, just the same. So, like, for me, I think that's why it's hard. Like, I'm not super into politics. I'm not doing – I haven't studied deep. I don't know what policies they're passing. And that's on me. I need, I need to learn more about it. But for me, it's like – I guess the reason why, selfishly, why I haven't really cared too much, selfishly, is that I don't see any effects or changes within my immediate family or my personal life. My immediate family, no matter who, who the president is, we still – 
they still out in Indianapolis grinding, trying to make a dollar. You know what I'm saying? They still out here like the same old, same old. You know what I'm saying? I feel like the people with money, people who are wealthy and rich, I feel like their lives are are, are impacted because like taxes and stuff like that. But like when you like an everyday folk, everyday person, I, it could be JB at president, it could be Jada Beans as president, baby girl, uh, Bobby Beauty uh eddie manyweather or trump or biden and my life is going to kind of be the everyday the same so that's why it's hard for me to really be locked in and be like oh i need to really pay attention because this is going to change everything so i don't know yeah um i don't know i was trying to find it um but i thought i had it i can't find it they kicked them out last night and i'm just like damn dog i don't know this motherfucker said the economy's booming and i'm like i don't get it how do we know? Like, for real, how do we know if it's booming or it's not? Like, what, what are we looking at exactly to define that the economy is booming? What What's the stat? What's the analytics that we're looking or viewing to understand uh, that we're doing well or we're, or we're not doing well? Is it the I, I overall really businesses and their, their, how much money they're making as, as all the businesses in the country or what? Yeah, I don't really know. All I know is, like, I think I think when he talks about certain shit up there, he's not affected by, like, the 90 percent of the rest of the country that's struggling to buy groceries and shit right so that's kind of how i look at it the inflation of the the inflation is going to go up every year i regardless of the of the president but um i'm just trying to figure out how it's not like treason like he's flown he he's it's on record he's flown over three hundred twenty thousand immigrants in here secretively privately into our country he has responsible he's responsible for doing so Yet he arrested an American, a fucking veteran, a Marine. Like, I, to me, I, I'm just trying to figure it out. This ain't free. We don't have free speech. It ain't free any of that shit. And then he was talking about for us to pay more taxes. Like, he wanted more. He kept pushing taxes. We already had, like, I believe, other than, like, a third world country, I think our tax system, our taxes, the way it's set up and how we pay basically for nothing is the worst in the world mm. like it's the worst tax system in the world america and our taxes aren't paying for our government like i'm just telling you like it ain't it ain't ta our taxes we pay are not paying for our government i'm just telling you it's not a, it's not running the day-to-day -day operations like miss me with that bullshit I, i'm just telling you um i don't know it's crazy it's a it's a it's a crazy deal Jason Adair said, you're awesome, coach, but you're wrong on this. What am I wrong about? I'm not even saying nothing right or wrong. <laughs> I'm just telling you uh, the facts of the matter. Uh, all right, where are we at? We got a lot going on today. It is uh, Bill's Mafia in the house. Joe Biden's joke, and it, it made us look worse last night. Who you, uh, you want in office, JB? Huh? Huh? I said, who you want in office? I don't know. There's not there's not anybody I've seen running. I don't know anybody. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just asking. I'm just curious. I don't know anybody that's out there, but I'm not ESPN though. Like if if it's if it's out of the two, taking Trump all day okay. long. Okay, so I'm about to say, if you gonna say it, then speak on it and say it. If you gonna say it, speak on it. You ask me about the two. There's only two guys. It's gonna come down to one of them is a cadaver. You just heard him last night. The other one. Got out of cadaver status because he's not been president for four years. He's recouped. He's refreshed a little bit, playing golf and shit. But now he's facing, you know, legal fucking. Like, you're a joke, homie. Like, let me be honest. The guy that's running that everyone in our country wants to be president is facing, like, 20,000 felony counts. <laughs> so he has to win that shit. He has to beat a bunch of indictments first. Let's be clear. This yeah. got, hey, what about Trump? Trump got a Rico. <laughs> he gonna he gonna pardon himself. About, right, right. He gonna win. Like, all right. The first order of business as president is I am free of all charges. See, I don't, I don't, I don't dive charges. in. I don't dive into all that shit so deep, man. Because it's just to me, it's like I don't know enough about it to talk about it. So I don't know anything about the charges, really. I don't know about the fucking all the shit. I'm just looking though at it, and I'm like. There's not a 45 year old in this country that's better suited to go out there, like have some nuts and guts, and be like, "Fuck everybody, let's let's ride, let's get like, like who could bring everybody back together, like you, motherfucker, it's you. 
Uh, yeah. <laughs> you are the woman. You're 45. You're a good leader. You've, lead, you've led men. You've had positive track record. You ain't gonna take no bullshit. You know, you're you're, you're emotionally intact for the most part. The only thing that will concern me, though, JB, you do get triggered. And I, you as the president, you somebody will piss there. you off verbally, I'm and you will start there. a whole fucking war. <laughs> oh, well, fuck that thing. Bombs over bad dad. We going to I'm like, what the fuck? Damn. I'm like, all he said, he, he said a joke. You don't hear this, man. So I, you know, that's the only thing that made me a little nervous with you. Other than that, though, you would do a hell of a job. Oh yeah, it'd be crazy. See, I'd get all the brothers and the whites and the Mexicans that are really American. I'd get all them back cracking. We all be back together. Like we'd be at the barbecue together, chill. Everything would be back cracking. The country would be back tight. And like we'd be back tight. And then we wouldn't be fuck. There would be no Hamases. And I, I'm just saying, there ain't, we ain't worried about all these other foreign cats. Nah, now we got a real country. Right now, we're all divided. We got black versus white. Got black. Everybody would be fucking up these little kids robbing uh, McDonald's and Nordstrom Rack and shit. We'd all be fucking them up. They'd stop real quick. That shit would be over. We wouldn't be shutting down all the stores in San Francisco. Like You would bring the whites and the blacks together. And every we, day we, we all be I mean, good the kids, the kids would know the kids would be walking around on eggshells again they'd be back knowing their place i'm a fucking kid i gotta learn how to be an adult first i'm not gonna just skip to be an adult and i never learned how to be a fucking kid yet like you're gonna be a kid there's gonna be some hierarchy around this motherfucker like a lot of shit i would change real quick and it would be a better place I'm telling you though you're not gonna like the part i'm shutting down some social media maybe not at all but i'm shutting it down for like about six months what the fuck so you gonna mess up? Nah, I ain't going for your ass. You gonna get me fired from my job? We gonna nah, lose? Yeah, we gonna lose the okay. podcast? Nah. Everything I'm that I'm building, I'm about to fucking lose. So I got. I'm, nah, I ain't voting for your ass. We're gonna we're gonna do some other shit though to keep you, you know, cracking. Nah, 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 the thing is, I'm gonna make Smitty. I'm gonna make you guys go see each other face to face at the grocery store. I'm gonna get rid of Uber Eats. I'm gonna make your fat ass Keith Keith Smith, your fat wobble body titty ass. Is going to have to walk to the store and get your motherfucking ass some goddamn groceries. You're going to actually talk to a human being in person. And so you don't have to fucking catfish their ass on Twitter and tell them that you're really you look like Smitty, motherfucker, when you really look like Keith. That's the difference. We're going to make sure you know who we are. You're going to know the motherfuckers we're going to see in person. We're going to no more catfish, no more Twin, what is it? Trender or whatever? None of that swiping shit. You're going to talk in person to a female, Keith. You fucking obese wobble body. We're going to change the obesity levels in this country, first and foremost. We're going to get the obesity level back down to a manageable state. We're the most obese country in the world, Smitty. And it's going up every day because of phone, cell phone, social media, Uber Eats, the lack of fucking going out and communicate. That's why we're fucked up in America because we don't communicate verbally anymore in person. Everything's through a DM or a tweet. I cut that shit out. I'm telling you, telling you, we're going to make the motherfucking now we'll make America great again. <laughs> All the social talk. media people are going to be pissed off like. Mr. Good. Beast can't make his money no more. He a fucking multi-million. He gonna Good. fuck his shit up. Good. Guess why I'm doing it too, Pat man. Pat shit's God, fucked man. up now. Our shit, everybody's shit is man, fucked up. That's why I'm gonna shut down everybody. McPhee, buzzing with the boys, the pivot. Hey, we're gonna come in though on the other side. And, yeah, that's hey, it. Hold on. hold on. The only show that's gonna work on YouTube is our shit. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Fuck that. Everybody else got that fucking benefit. We're the ones getting fucked. I, I like that. Yeah. I like that. Hey, um, Jabron. Somebody said Jabron gonna be be your VP. <laughs> yeah, Smitty gonna be the uh the guy that brings me out. Did you hear? Did you see the guy last night that brought brought Biden out? Uh, Smitty gonna be that guy. Walk him out like this. Yeah, Jimmy uh, gonna have an AE as his VP. She my to VP. My VP. I think it's probably going to be like A.E. Saban. Oh, okay. No, no, no. Saban got to be a secretary of defense. Yeah. Somebody, though, that's a leader, knows how to lead my, uh, probably man. Uh, you ain't going to have no women a part of your, your group, your cabinet? Not a lot of women on there. No, no offense, women, but women don't have balls for a reason. I, 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 don't, I don't need the emotional argument in the war room about, 
no coach, no JB, we can't go to war. We have too many. No, no, no. See, we take the women out of that room, and then it's a bunch of men in there getting the brass tacks talking about, all right, fuck it, let's go. Uh, who wants some? China, Russia, Iraq? See, the women, though, you're going to be in the, you know, you're going to be in the White House. I'm going to have you in there, though. I'm going to have you in there. You want what? I'm going to have you in there. All right, what they doing in there? I'm about, I need uh, job titles. What they yeah. <laughs> Hey, Jamie said, I'm going to have you in there. I'm going to have you in there in the White House. <laughs> hey. Uh, what do you mean? Why, where are they going to be? Uh, uh, not like that. But I'm just saying, they're not going to be in the war room, though. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying, that's just, that's just real shit. I can't. Can't, can't have an emotional. Can't have an emotional roller coaster up in there. Um, do you think you think men are not emotional when it comes to uh, certain shit? If, now, you do now, know anger. You do know anger is an emotion, JB. Now, nowadays, are men or women? So, I seen you get pissed off on talking to T-Mobile. Dog, three seconds. You, yeah, yeah, that's a different. That's a that's an alpha male. That's emotional, right? Ain't that emotion? Nah, I don't know if it's emotion. I think it's a response. How is anger not an emotion? I don't know. Anger is a different deal to me. Anger is like a uh, response to a response. <laughs> I'd fire all made up humans. We'd have not fucking one of them motherfuckers in the, you know, goddamn well. That ain't going to be in the office. So we're going to change a lot of shit. We're going to change a lot of shit. You know, Biden's dog has bitten 30 people in the, in the White House. I heard they put it down. Maybe got all these fun facts about Biden. Hey, I heard. I just found out. I didn't know his dog bit 30 motherfuckers in the office. It's like a golden retriever, homie. My, my pit bull don't bite 30 people. Like, hey, you imagine Ash on the front lawn just fucking died. <laughs> they would, hey, motherfuckers would be so tired of Ash. Motherfuckers would never come visit you at the White House. What's this motherfucker hey, wrong? All right. <laughs> hey, because I'd mend the fence with Putin and them. Me and Putin probably be caught tight. But Putin wouldn't even want to walk. Putin, like, hey, meet me down the street because I don't nah, ask. Putin I don't gonna have in, he, he gonna have to deal with it, just like everybody walking in the house. Shit, he gonna have to deal with it. It'll take a couple minutes. <laughs> Putin, nah, but Putin fuck around and nah. deal, and, and deal Putin, with it. Putin to get his ass lit up. I'm saying Putin is y'all. I wouldn't fuck with Putin like on that level. Is what I'm saying, huh? I fuck building up. <laughs> um, what we got next? Let's move on. What we got next, man? Ben, Matt joins us in about 20 minutes. No Nadu today. He has to fill in for a hoops show, but he'll he's wow. on. Wow. Wow, Nadu. We got you two days a week. That's it. Two out of seven. That's it. And you said, fuck us, so you can go talk about some basketball. <laughs> hey, I forgive, but I don't forget. Remember that, Nadu. Well, who is this troll, Tate Gustavus? Yo, chat, tell JB to open my DM. Hey, man, I, I got something to say to the people, JB. Let me know when you're ready, man, because like, I got something on my, on my mind, and I'm just... I Smitty said so? Yeah, yeah, man, I, I, I got a little something, real quick something to say to the people, man. I ain't going to lie to you, man. Let me know when you're ready. Smitty says so, man, brought to you by Bet Online and Prospects, man. I have a simple message for you all today. Just do what's right. Listen, I know we all grew up differently. We all have unique backgrounds. But at the end of the day, we all get that internal feeling inside of us where we know right from wrong. We all have a conscious, at least initially we do. I do believe that you lose that conscious after repeatedly doing wrong. You, you become numb to wrong actions and wrong things. But let's avoid getting to that point and just live life the right way. Treat others with respect, and your life will be a lot better. At the bare minimum, you will feel better about yourself internally. And that's my simple and quick message for you all for this weekend, man. And listen, if you don't believe what I just said, if you don't agree with what I just said, I don't really care because everything I say is a fact because Smitty said so. That's all I got today, y'all. Smitty says so, man. Brought to you by Prospects. Oh, man. I got something to say, too. The Giants, the Browns, the Ravens, the Lions, 
your Colts, the Bucks, the Bears, the Eagles, the Titans are not serious programs. They're not serious NFL teams. They're not ever going to win a Super Bowl. Let me repeat. The Giants, the Browns, the Ravens, the Lions, the Colts, the Bucks, the Bears, the Titans, and the Eagles. It is International Women's Day in football. And there's a 141% increase in women hires on those particular teams. The Ravens has hired a woman strength and conditioning coach. Women, I love you women, I do. Um, but you can never be my strength conditioning coach in an NFL locker room or weight room. I'm sorry, just not, can't happen. The Giants hired Angela Baker. She's an offensive assistant coach. I know it's controversial, Smitty. I know you guys don't want to hear this, but what you saying? Just say it though. Like we gonna say it and say it. They're say not it. serious. They're not. They're not. Give me, serious. give me a firm statement, right? Give me a one, like a long Those line. Programs me- are not serious organizations. And why? Because they have women coaching grown men in the NFL. Stop it. You cannot get the most out of my fucking O and D line in the weight room. Kalen Booski. I'm fucking sorry. I like women. Love them to death. Sorry. Let's just keep it 100. Smitty, is this, is Kalen Booski going to get the most out of you in the fucking weight room? No, just, just keep it 100. Don't give me no politically correct answer. Keep it 100. Keep it a thousand. Keep it a buck. I'm grind. Hold on. You know me, JB. I'm grinding in the weight room regardless of a strength coach. Before I had a strength coach, I came, I came to Ball State squatting 575 with no strength coach. I came to Ball State power clear 335. So I'm the wrong bird yeah, to ask because you know I'm a hustle and grind. Yeah, that's what I am. Question. And that's my real answer. That's my real that's answer. That's answer. Who I am. You have a strength conditioning coach in the NFL, Smitty. This ain't Ball State. I'm asking you. In the NFL, there is a pecking order of things. Strength conditioning coaches in the NFL are like right under the head coach. They are right there. They run the business. They run your shit. They're controlling the team. 70% of the offseason, head coach don't even see the players. This person does. So I'm asking you, are you going in there to get to? I mean, it's tough days, Vinny. We got we got 95 percent max day. We got to go in there, and she getting you over the top, over the fucking hurdle that you need to get through to get over the top to be a all pro, to win a Super Bowl, to be a cohesive unit. Jill Costanza is the director of sports science in the for the Lions. What's wrong with that? Not a serious program. Not a serious organization. That's why there's they're never going to win. The of sports science isn't like a coach. That's just like you work within the the, the chain of the, you know what I'm saying? Like you're not coach like that, that's just a position on the team. That's like a social media manager for the Lions. That like you're not fucking you're not coaching the players. It, it's like well, she's you're talking you're talking as if like she's giving the information to the strength conditioning coach on all the new up-to-date sports science. What are we doing? Are we are we are we static stretching? Is that back in or are we dynamic warm-up? What, okay, but hold on, JB. Time oh, out. Like, I, I, I get we we agreed on the fact that I, I, I have came on this show and said being in a football locker room, I don't even think it's smart to have a woman as an actual like coach, coach, a position coach, a head coach. Cause I didn't know how a locker room dynamic is. It's very, very masculine. A lot of you people will call it toxic on the outside because you don't understand what it is. Yesterday, I think we played that uh that little old that old rap from the U, and we joked about it. But to me, that's just a regular day in the office, you know. But imagine saying that rap, that rap getting leaked, and you have a woman as your head coach or position coach. That would have been a whole fucking issue because they just, you know, it, it's inappropriate to them, and that's not how they understand it. So I, I'm agreeing with you on that on that front. But what I disagree with you on is. 
that like women can't be a part of any of the chain of command within the organization. Nah, don't, a, don't, 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 a woman knows how to work out. A woman know a woman don't, women knows the body mechanics and the anatomy, nah, and they can understand don't, don't and put move, plan of to do the work out. Move the goalposts. Talk about what we're talking about. Talk about what we're talking about. We're not talking about administrative assistant. We're and- talking about anal- giving the 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 uh, rundown on, or whatever on, for the Baker. workout. No, nah, don't move the goalposts. Angela Baker, Giants offensive assistant coach. Kaylee Brownson, Bra- Browns assistant wide receiver coach. Stop. R- Kelsey, Kaylin Buskey, Raven strength and conditioning coach. Jill Costanza, Lions Director of Sports Science. Isabel Diaz, Colts, Special Teams Coach. (laughs) Moral Joel Java Deerfordoffer, Bucks Director of Rehab and Performance. Wonder why why the 900 injuries. No, what was Uh, the last name you said? I didn't hear it all the way. I don't know. Don't worry about it. Jennifer King. Bears offensive assistant running backs. Wonder why the Bears running game was so shit. Autumn Lockwood, Eagles associate performance coach. Lori Locust, Titans defensive quality control. I'll explain to you what quality control coaches do, by the way, if you don't know. Haley Roberts, Titans assistant sports performance. Megan Rossberg, Ravens assistant to the head coach. Let's move on, dog, because it'll be bad. It'll be bad on social media. And I, I, it'll be bad. I'll take – I'll be bad. It'll be bad on social media. This motherfucker, JB, he got so mad. He threw his phone. He leaned back, took his hat off from the back, put it to the front, put it back to the back. Because nobody's going to talk about it. Nobody's going to say it. It, it. You know, I'm the asshole and the devil because I said it. I, I said what every player's thinking, and it is what it is. Um. I don't know. I said what I said, man. When it comes to coaches, I agree with you on the coaching side. Like, I can't have a woman D-line coach for multiple reasons. But I guess the side where I'm a little bit on the fence is, like, would I really care if if a woman is is the strength coach? Like, I don't know. I I, I don't know if that would bother me as much as, again, a head coach or a – when I say position coach, like, I get it. We're, we're with our strength coach. At least at the college level, I don't know. I don't. I didn't make the NFL, so I don't know how much they're with their strength coach. But at the college level, we're with our strength coach majority of the year. So I, I understand where you're coming from. You're like, this is the guy who's gonna prepare you for the fucking season. All I'm saying is, and this this is not a PCN. This is my legit. I swear to God, this is me. I'm I'm grinding because I'm. I know that I need to prepare my fucking body in order to make it through this season. So I don't give a fuck if it's a a, a, a woman, a man, whatever is in there. That's what I'm going to do. From, from a weight room standpoint, but from a coaching, from an actual position coach, head coach standpoint in the fucking like locker room, in the nitty gritty, like I don't think that's even a safe environment for a woman to be a part of, if I'm being honest. You, you know, know what hurts me about this? You know what works me about this whole thing? What? And I'm glad the women are in here. Some of the women in here are, are, are on the women same side that I'm on. They understand that there's just, there's a... I'm not going to say there's a place for women and all that shit. I'm not going there because women are becoming breadwinners. Women have taken over. The, there's a lot of things women have done that have changed the, the business, the the world. But here's the thing, though. Like, I know too many fucking hardworking jacks that are out here grinding that started as a GA and was told to do X, Y, and fucking Z, and you'll be the next guy to get this next gig and this is coming from ex players, or I talked to KJ Wright the other day. He couldn't get a fucking interview at the team that he played for and won a Super Bowl with in Seattle, and now had to go reach out to Frisco and got an interview at Frisco, and Frisco hired him. I'm not gonna even dive into why. <laughs> well, he got hired though. That's a good thing. Yeah, but he wasn't gonna be if he didn't get proactive and show his name off. My point is this, though. It's the same. He had to use a name of his name that played in the NFL to get a job where I know a million motherfuckers. No offense to KJ. I'm going to have him on the show. KJ hasn't coached yet like that. He's been coaching lower level stuff, helping out. Now he's going to go straight be an NFL coach. Let's be real because of his name. Yeah. And his experience as a player. Yeah. Okay. So if we equate that to a woman, 
taking a job from a Jack, Darnell Smith, Smitty, Darnell Smith, who came up at Ball State and was a GA and got the head coach coffee, and then he fucking ran assistant in the weight room, and then he fucking was assistant D-line coach, and then coach finally brought him up after three years. He got his BA, and then he made him a fucking assistant, assistant D-line coach. And then the D-line coach got a job. He left and went over to fucking Indiana. And it was Smitty's turn. Smitty been there five fucking years and he's grinded and busted his ass. He recruited big time players and brought him in there and even helped get kids from Warren Central. And he's a local cat. And bam. Angela Baker got the fucking job. See, that's the fucking problem, homie. It's a bullshit hiring process. And it's not only nepotism, but it is straight up. I don't know what you want to call it, but we know what it is. It is appeasing the fucking uh, people that need to be appeased. It is nothing more, nothing less. And you're sitting there like this, Smitty. Like, let's keep it real. You are you want to be as centered down the line as you can, and I understand. No way you're not sitting there like, fuck this. I've been doing this fucking five years. And now she got hired and... You got the opportunity to stay as the assistant D-line coach or leave. You know what it is? It's like the baby mama who keeps the daddy away from the kid. Now the kid's daddy don't see him because the kid's daddy got to shake. He's got to go be a man at some point and say, fuck this. You're keeping me from my fucking kid. Well, in your case, they're keeping you from the kids that you're coaching because they made you go back and be the same guy you were, assistant to the assistant, after you busted your ass for five fucking years. And I'm telling you this story because I know for a fact it happens, and it is true story. And this has happened, and not only at the NFL level, but at the four-year level, it's happening every single day. But that happens even not, it's not just a woman thing, like you said. That happens with nepotism all the time. That same scenario, replace the woman, but but, but put the, the coach's nephew or some shit. Boom. They, it's the same It's the same system. It's all the same shit. That's why I say it. I say I bring up nepotism more than anybody on any show in America. That's why. It's the same exact thing. That's It's the same shit as KJ Wright. That's nepotism in its own way. Same well, thing. I'm with- not going to lie. I don't know. I, I, I'm kind of, I feel you, and, and, and this world's not fair. I get it. But, like, I'm just, JB, if... <laughs> If a sister, if I got an opportunity somewhere that I heard about, and I and I know you personally, and I think you would be a good fit, and you might not have the exact experience of somebody else who got it, but I know you personally, I know your character, I know your hustle, we're cool. I'm a fucking, I'm gonna throw you an alley oop. Like I, that's just life. I don't. Really, I mean, we can, we can, we can say it's not fair, or you didn't earn it to the same extent, and all this and that. But that's fucking life. It's about who you know, and opportunities. You brought me on this fucking show with you. Like, you could have probably got a a more experienced person, somebody who's been, you know, older than me, played longer, been in the game longer. But through a mutual friend, Marcellus Wiley, <laughs> who respects me, you're like, fuck it. That, like, that's a form. Like, everything's a form of nepotism to some degree, to some extent. I got my opportunity at Fox because of nepotism. Like, but that's just an opportunity. Once you get the opportunity, you got to maximize that shit and excel it. I just don't see why we should be mad. I guess if I'm the person who didn't get the job, I might I might be in my feelings. But like, okay, use your connections with somewhere else. Everybody has connections. Even the college, I got friends who are getting coaching jobs because of their connections. Like, okay, I played for this coach in 2012. Now it's 2024, and I'm coaching. He has a higher position somewhere else. They're gonna bring me on. That is that's a part of life. I don't even know what that's even. But that's you're skipping over a whole fa- a whole part of all the guys that get missed. And even getting your opportunity that you discussed in nepotism. You got the opportunity over a million motherfuckers because of who you knew and, and who I don't feel, and listen and call me an asshole. I don't feel bad one second, one minute. Because I've been through a lot bad. of shit in my fucking You're life. And and, and, and I, I know I deserve what I got because I know yeah, what I work I put in too. To, you don't have to feel bad. What I'm saying is, <laughs> what about all the Darnell Smitties we just mentioned as a GA that got passed over? For an Angela Baker that who knows her background, but I know this. She didn't play fucking NFL, college, high school football and pads. <laughs> I know this. 
She don't know when nut crunching time comes down to the wire and how to get a fucking left tackle motivated to fucking go kill the defensive end in the fourth quarter in the Super Bowl. Let me ask you she, this. Let me ask you this. Do you think there there are some, some women coach football coaches out there that are better than some men football coaches out there? Or do you think it's just it's just impossible, just the, the nature of a woman and a man, it's just it's just impossible for a woman to be a better football coach than, than a man. No, no matter how much study they do, no matter how much film they watch, no matter if they sat down with Bill Belichick and Andy Reid for 10 hours every single day for your whole year, no matter what they did, the fact that, that, that they're a woman, it, it, it just is, is what it is. They just can't, they just can't do it. It is what it is. All right, man. I'm cool. I'm, not, I was, it's not, hey, it's not their fault. It's not yeah. their fault. But let's not try to let's not try to put a fucking square peg into a round hole here. That is what we're doing. We're trying to force you like right now, but with that question, yeah, that question will open up Pandora's box to the mainstream media and everybody else, and they will force a narrative that Kelsey is qualified to coach fucking Leon Led at D-line because she's done the work and the studying and the blah, blah, blah. They'll push that narrative, homie. They will fucking throw a square peg into a round hole and make you believe it. And I'm sitting there like, that is where we are now in society. We are going to force the narrative that she can coach the running backs for the Chicago Bears. And somebody mentioned the fact that, well, the Chicago Bears weren't th that bad in the run game. Guess what? Yes, they were. You don't know football. You look at stats, and they ran for 140 yards a game, and they're in the middle of the pack in the NFL, and you think they're fucking good. How about when you look at their rushing yards per carry in nut crunching time when they need to get on the stay on the football field keep the defense off the football field how about you dive into it and look at the bears offensive production in the run game when justin fields ain't running the ball you fucking moron how about you look at the running back production and not the quarterback running the football. So out of 141 yards, how many yards do you think Justin Fields is responsible for, numb nuts? How many of those yards do you think Justin Fields? Do not debate me when it comes to fucking football, you fanboys. Because just so we're clear, Justin Fields is 70% of that fucking run game on ad-libbed run plays, and you're going to sit here and tell me that a woman is the running back coach there. Coach, they ran for 140 yards, and they were in the middle of the pack. How about when it comes to nut-crunching time in fourth and one, motherfucker, and they need a first down? What's happening? Oh, they're off the football field, and guess what? Chicago's defense is back out there because of a woman being the fucking running back coach. So don't fucking holler at me about stats, because stats get you fired, dumb fuck. Anyway... Moving on amicably, Ben Simmons says he's done for the season. <laughs> we may not have enough time for this, Smitty, because Matt's going to join us here in a, min in a minute. Uh, let's take a commercial break real quick. Yep. Let's take a commercial break real quick, and we'll be back in five with Big Matt McChesney. And, Atina, I'm not wrong. You're wrong. And you know why you're wrong, Atina? Because you've never walked in these shoes. And I don't walk in Mac makeup shoes either. I don't go and tell Atina how to fucking put on make Mac makeup. Sorry. I'm not actually telling you how to strap up your bra or put on high heels. I'm not telling you any of that. It would be ignorant. And you're being ignorant to telling me that I'm wrong in a space that you've never lived in. Sorry, sweetheart. But that's the truth. I'll be back in five. Yeah, we can see it. You being scary. What I got to do? What I, so what kind of, what do I got to do? I don't, I don't know. We didn't go over there. <laughs> you got to do a cannonball. So we got to do a countdown, and then you're going to run in and do a cannonball into the water. Do you know what a cannonball is, or are you too old for that? I got to just run in and do a cannonball? That's all you got to do. You got to do a countdown. Five. We're going to be like five, four, three, and you're going to run in and do a cannonball. Knees up, wrap your hands around your knees, pause, and jump in. Yeah, that's easy. That's easy. I thought you wanted me to dive in. I, it ain't deep enough for you to dive in, I don't think. Oh, yeah, it's deep. I don't want you to kill yourself, JB. It, it ain't worth it. it they ain't send that much money. <laughs> Come on, Chad, Come on. are y'all ready for this? Are y'all ready to see? Co oh, the shirt's coming off, y'all. The shirt's coming off. Are y'all ready to see Coach JB dive into the water? Everybody that sent their money in, I want to tell y'all right now, shout out to you. Because without y'all doing that, this would not be possible.
We appreciate y'all for putting your money where your mouth is. And it's about to be go time. Coach JB, how you feeling right now, JB? Talk to us. Come on, man. Pressure burst pipes. This ain't shit, dog. I'm from the mean streets, homie. JB! <laughs> he did it, y'all. Hey, that was the biggest, that was the biggest explosion I've ever seen. The whole water just left the pool. It went from seven foot deep to oh, three feet deep. It's oh. empty now, man. I love it, man. Bring ash in the water. Oh, yeah. On, That's dope, man. JB really living living that life. Come on, Bubba. Hold on, hold on, y'all. Before we end Ash. the show, we got to see. Come on, Ash. Come on, Ash. Look at Ash. He's scared. Ash, he's scared. Like, Ash, I don't know what this is. Come on, Come on. Damn, JB got that money, money. Look at Ash, dog oh. pelling. Okay. okay, Ash, I see you, Ash. Come on, Callie, you old school. Come on, Callie. See y'all, Callie, you old head. She like, listen, I didn't been there and done that. I don't. Oh, that's a little baby. He's so big, but he's still a baby. Hey, I love y'all, man. Appreciate y'all for tuning in. JB is a man of his word. If you can't go get no pussy, you cannot recruit. Keep it 100. And I used to fire coaches. Hey, coach, when last time you had some pussy? Shit, coach, been here. Fire. Fuck out of here. I, I, I'm being real, homie. If you can't get no pussy, you can't recruit. That's uh, number one. I think we have to – listen, I do not believe it'll be very hard to go back to the system where if you transfer, you got to sit out a year. I don't think that's going to be very yeah. hard. That That's not going to be very hard to re-implement. I, I think we've overcorrected. You know, when, when guys start saying that this coach is messing up my mental health, and so, therefore, I should be able to play right away. And then they broke the gate open. I think if we, if President Mark Emmert at the NCAA, who was also the president of the University of Washington when I was there, if it is going to be very simple to reestablish, if you transfer, you sit out. We don't want to go out and turn over rocks and find the hungry high school kid. Guess what, dog? You know how many times I've been told no? It just takes the one, though, to tell me yes. But we're so lazy, we get told no one time. Guess what? If, if, if a motherfucker told me no, you know what I'd be? A motherfucking pussyless virgin. Let me address uh, the women in the room. No offense to any of you guys. We love women. We love you guys for being in the show. Second of all, I'm single, Atina, because I fucking choose to be. Number two. Number three, I read your statement and listened to what you had to say. And I said what I said for a reason, Atina. <laughs> you said, what if they played in the NFL? Guess what? There's no such thing as what if, because you haven't. You've never played the NFL. <laughs> so what are we talking about? What if you were on the front line in Germany in World War I? <laughs> You're not. There's a reason why the women aren't on the front. I don't know, but women, women are soldiers, though, in war. Women be out there fucking are. shooting and dying, right. too, though. That's a I good point. Right. You, you might have just fucked up a little bit and, and, no. and hurt your own argument. 
I said front line, Smitty. See, you're not listening. I heard what you said. Front line back. You sit out there fucking and walking on the oh, front line, not. back line, middle line. You sit out oh, there shooting and put your life on the line. No, you're not. I said front line. See that you see, you're like a you're like a Tina. You're not listening. So a Tina said, What if a, a woman played? Then she could she coach? Then could she coach? Yeah. She probably could coach when she pl- if she played, but if it was a fifth, we'd all be loaded. Well, my homegirl, well, not now, but middle school old lineman, her name T. She was like fucking, I don't know what she was, Hawaiian or something. The big, I always still share that same story. She played middle school all the way up till freshman year. Freshman year, she stopped because physically she couldn't play no more. But she played the game. If she wanted to coach, she can coach. No, you still feel the same fucking way. Don't give me that. No, here's the problem we have. See, Zach is in the Zach is in the chat, and he's playing Captain Save. The reason I'm saying that is because Zach and these men that we get, this is the problem with men in the world. The men that we have, like Zach, he just wants to holler at a Tina, thinks that he could get a piece of a Tina and holler at her and try to hit. He knows damn well that a woman can't coach in the NFL. He's just trying to holler and be nice to a Tina. That's the problem with these men. These men are female tendency men. They have female tendencies. They are trying to protect and defend a woman over the man's argument because they're trying to hit. That's what we do as men. It's a shame that a real discussion can take a turn because this motherfucker Zach is a simp and is trying to get some pussy. Let's just keep it 100. But see, we won't call it out what it is. Zach is a simp and he's defending a statement and a question from a Tina that is not a real fucking question. The woman doesn't play. She never played and never will play. Well, she may play soon when NFL turns flag football. But let's not try to force. Again, Atina is forcing a narrative on us about a what if. Well, if my auntie had balls, she'd be my uncle. What, what if? Jo- what, what careers or jobs that uh, that are dominated by women that men should, should never work in? <sighs> Listen, this is not a... Uh, attack on women homie this is about one thing and why are we taking it and flipping it on to a bunch of things it is a discussion about women coaching in the nf fucking l stop acting like it's a discussion about women's indictment on all other things no it's not stop moving it around It is an NFL coaching discussion. That's all we're talking about. I'm not talking about a Tina changing fucking breaks. I'm not talking about a Tina fucking giving me fucking closet advice, how to fucking do my makeup, how to fuck nothing. It's NFL coaching jobs, period. Stop moving the needle around. Stop asking about what ifs. This isn't a what if discussion because it has never happened. So stop acting as if it did. That's all I'm saying. I'm fucking with you, coach. I get you. I'm with you, man. Oh, I'm talking about the whole chat, everybody. Because everybody's everybody wants to be fucking, oh, like, no, Zach, you're a simp. Stop fucking being a simp. That's why you couldn't coach for me because you would take the fucking GAs or you would take the player side. Uh, uh, the player, uh, uh, he coach, he didn't really steal from the dorm. Oh, really? What's this fucking camera show, you fucking dick face? Now you- <clears throat> OG Thor said, man, it can't be moms. This your answer. <laughs> That's the one job we can't do. <laughs> Y'all motherfuckers are crazy. It's a fun. Hey, I love this show, man. We got so many different opinions, and that's what makes this show great, in my opinion. We we agree to disagree. You know what I'm saying? I'm really with JB for the most part. I just think. I'm a little bit nuanced, I'll say, when it comes to some of the particular positions. Nah, you're a little gray area. <clears throat> no, nah, I'm in a gray area with certain positions, I guess. But I just, you know, I'm going st- to stick to what, you know, what I believe. Position coaches, it can't be no women in there for multiple reasons. So let's move on, though, man. Should, should we take some call? What you want to do? You want to go to Ben Simmons? We got, we got a lot we can do. Yeah, Mac will be on at five. Comes on. Ben Simmons, go ahead. I, I get your take on it because I just so you know, 
He is owed forty-seven million next year. Is it guaranteed? Uh, and he remember this guy sued the NBA. Okay, he sued the NBA. He's owed owed he's owed generational wealth. Um, go ahead. Uh, we'll br- let's bring Matt in with this. Um, uh, go ahead. Uh, what up, Matt? What up, family? Yeah, I don't oh, know what to say. I mean, I'm, listen, if, I'm, if I'm the guy's me, seriously, women, I got the women backing me down. You know, it is what it is. I'm standing on business today, though. I, I have no sympathy today because I'm tired of the narratives being pushed. Um, but anyway, if, if Ben Simmons is seriously injured, which it sounds like you have, he's dealing with a nerve situation that it it might be serious at this point. Then I mean, it is what it is. I think the problem is that it's Ben Simmons, right? And we know that. He missed the whole fucking year because of quote unquote mental health, which I don't even know what that means exactly. You know, so now it's like you go from means that you're means you're a fucking cunt. So you go yeah. from that to okay, now my back hurt. It's kind of like um my neck and my back. What's it called? What's the old little the boy to cry he's, wolf he's or whatever? Like it, it's he's like yes, yeah, he's a hypochondriac. He makes it's like, but yeah, it, it's like okay, when um he might really be hurt now, but because of your previous actions we don't give a fuck and or we don't believe you well yeah it's like it's like a cheater it's like i cheated 50 fucking thousand times in the past but i didn't do it this time even though you think i it like mm-hmm. i i really didn't do it this time we're like yeah we don't give a fuck yeah and, and you know what the problem is here's the number one problem i have matt and smitty about this ben simmons cat Again, we're going to push the narrative and change it and move the goalposts and try to fucking figure out a way to put a square peg in a round hole and figure a way to defend this motherfucker. The bottom line is there's no defending him because you can't sit here and tell me that he had a bad back in Philly four years ago and would not shoot a three-point shot, would not do it. And then he moves to Brooklyn and still won't shoot a three, still won't do it. So you're telling me your back's fucked up so you can't shoot a three? And then you go, okay, now I know it's not my back. They're buying, they're not buying my back thing no more because I won't shoot. Now it's mental health because I won't shoot now because I got mental block. And then the next day it's going to be, oh, shit, you know what? I can't dribble to my right because I'm a left-handed and uh, my mental fortitude won't allow me to go right. <laughs> Look, what are we doing, dog? He's owed $47 million. He sued the NBA for to get more money from sitting out for load managing. Like this is the fucking generation we're dealing with here. I am just fucking over the cat. I wish the NBA would make an example of him, to be yeah, honest. He doesn't with have you. a job, bro. Uh, he's not that he's not good enough to do this kind of shit. There's somebody out there, you know, in, in athletics where you're supposed to be able to grind and earn it. This guy's given everything. Here, here's my take. He's not even. He's terrible, dog. I, I, he here's the thing about it. I agree with Smitty on one thing. Like the dude came out of college, uber talented. We thought this motherfucker was a dude. Absolutely. Magic Johnson ask lefty fucking. They, they were Jalen Rose times one. three. Yep. Here's the thing. Can we honestly sit here as coaches, Matt and I, and Smitty have played, and sit here and evaluate this dude and say, all right. He's bitched and moaned. He's 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 fucking sued the NBA for missing games. But as a player, competitor, and a coach and an organizational GM or runner of things, can I sit here and say, all right, when did this motherfucker go get better every single offseason? When did he work on his game, Smitty? When did he really def- go right? When did he work on his three? When has this guy said, I'm worth the 50 million and I'm going to be worth it and I'm, I've am i been busting my ass every offseason? Every offseason, he's in fucking Dubai. He's he's bitching and moaning about not playing. Like, no, what are we doing? How are we defending a dude that doesn't want to get better at his craft and get more money? Well, look, I will say this. Being, I, I watched the Nuggets last night. I don't know if you guys watched that, but it was awesome. I mean, hell of a game. Awesome. Hell of a game. I'm mad I didn't go to it. I thought it started at 630 and it started at 8 out here. So we walked in and I was like, turn it on. We recorded it. And my son's like, it's at 8, dummy. And I was like, shit. So we definitely could have gone. But last night was incredible. And I only bring it up, number one, because did you see Aaron Gordon's dunk? Yeah, that put back. Oh, holy shit. Number one. Number two, we you know, Nikola Jokic, I understand that the 
there's a lot of there's 20 other there's 29 other cities that don't really show him the respect that he should get in my opinion two-time mvp finals mvp champion all you know, 20 triple doubles now again this year he had 29 last year i only bring this up because we're talking about ben simmons the number one pick in the draft who has every tool imaginable who was you know he's the next great one and blah 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 and the only team in the entire league that wanted Nikola was the Nuggets. And he went in the end of the second round and he worked his dick off and developed into what you see. Watch this. Ha! Holy shit! Woo! You gotta wake you up in the fucking morning there, boy. Eric Gordon's a man of the people, baby. Yeah! I love that shit. I mean, there's, I don't know if there's any, look, sack. I think it's a regular dunk. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was a regular he's fucking, tip. fucking hater. That was a regular tip. You're such yeah, a hater. That's a regular tip back. People think uh -huh. I'm a hater. That's how you know you're a mess. We gotta bring back. We gotta bring back that the haters ball part oh, two. Dude. Do it our way. He'd be the, the fucking top. That's not a regular tip back, Doug. <laughs> Jimmy, we've been seeing that in the hood forever. <laughs> <laughs> the haters ball. <laughs> we gotta bring it back. Jimmy, he'd be the king of it. I think I think that I think that Gordon got fucked over twice in the dunk contest, and I think he gets more love <laughs> than he should. Fuck you, Aaron Gordon's a man of the people. He's a stud. He's perfect. He's a ba he just he just sits on the baseline and waits for Nicola to serve it up a dunk. He does it every fucking game. He's good defender, a great defender, and he's one of the reasons they won last year. He was incredible. He's in the a great role player, like a great, great. role player. And and the people in Denver love him. 50's a man of the fucking people. Run for mayor, AG. I'm with it. Uh, but I bring this all back to Ben Simmons with look at Aaron Gordon was a great pick, developed, worked his balls off into being a great pro. Murray's a first rounder, has pushed through so many injuries and developed into being a really good pro and champion. Look at uh, Michael Porter Jr. Michael Porter Jr. went in the first round, had all these back problems, very similar to Ben Simmons. Did he quit and cry and bitch and demand trades and sit down? No, he went to work and got better and fixed it. And then you've got the 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 matriarch here, 15, Nikola Jokic, the Joker, who's a second round pick, who they drafted and sat on the bench and developed the shit out of into the best player in the NBA. So this, like, look at last night, the Minnesota game. That Anthony Edwards block is fucking nuts. Homeboy. Brat broke his neck almost on the backboard. He might be my favorite player, man. He might. Oh, he I'm, I'm so trying to find my next favorite player. It might be Anthony Edwards. He's, He's a fucking so dog. Watch, dog. He's so explosive. But look at him. He wasn't. He was really good when he came in, first pick. But he's gotten better every year. Yeah. But like, it, how can you go and have that much talent and then look at your bank account and be like, you know what? I earned all this. Nah, you were given that. You got to fucking get better to earn it, dog. And it really fucking pisses me off. That That's the one thing. It's not the one thing. There's a lot of shit that pisses me off. But that's one of the things that really eats at me, man, is one player like Ben Simmons can give so many other guys that are busting their ass and, like, doing it right and trying to play every night and shit like that. And Embiid, he's a bitch, too, super soft. But not surprising that both of them are on the same team. Yeah, I know you'd look at me like that. I, just, thinking, I don't think oh, – I, 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 I can't put Embiid in the same and category. He's, he's still he's still though. Though. Embiid is – he'll sit out every 25 of those games if he can get away with it and still want to win the MVP. That shit don't roll with me. So I, I just – I feel like there's a lot of guys in the NBA that are doing it right and want to do it right. And then there's a couple turds, Harden, Simmons, you know, fucking Kyrie at times. He's actually – doing pretty good these days, not being a piece of shit, and bead. Those, those guys piss me off. I can hear it in your voice, man. Well, since we're on the topic right now about your nuggets, how confident are you that you guys are about to be back-to-back -back champions? And then secondly, are is there any team out there that, you know, brings any sort of, like, minor oh, yeah. concern to oh, yeah. you at all? I think that this year is going to be – last year they rolled through the playoffs. I told you they would. I told you they were going to win the finals. I know I'm wearing a fanboy hat, but I don't give a shit. I, I know what I'm looking at. Um, I think this year is going to be much more difficult. You know, losing Bruce Brown, he's a huge part of the bench. But Peyton Watson, that kid is a fucking animal at a UCLA. So long. He had a great dunk last night. Unbelievable blocks. Really good defender. He's kind of filled that role, but he's still figuring it out. I think that the, the West is way better. Oh, Minnesota was an eight seed last year. They're the one. 
I think Denver's right on their ass because they've won seven of eight. But Oklahoma City didn't even make the playoffs last year. They were in the play-in and didn't get in. And now they're the two, and they're balling the fuck out. And they've got some really good players in depth. You know, the the end of the bracket. Lakers own them, though. With the, yeah, this is what I'm talking about. The end of the bracket with the last four. I'm pretty sure the last four are like Golden State, the Lakers, the Sacramento, Kings, and Sacramento, the and you know the cold part is I can't you know, remember the last the last team. But Matt, the cold part is the the, the Lakers <laughs> own OKC. Always have. like the, the Lakers could get in as like the seven. And no, they might play and first. They the, last year, the Lakers are going to play first round, and the Lakers are going to beat them. That's yeah, the crazy shit. They, they beat Memphis last year on the first round, seven two. I'd imagine that this year they're going to get a seven two matchup. And if well, they Matt, get, right right now, the, Matt, the, the the last four it's the Kings, the Kings. Mavericks, the Warriors, yeah. and the Lakers. Lakers. So that that's the playing tournament. That's going to be a hell of a feast. I mean, and, and that's what I'm saying. The bottom of the West is pretty good. Teams that have a ton of talent that get hot at the end of the year, very similar to what we saw last year with both Golden State and the Lakers. So look, the end the the end of the West concerns me. The the the, the Front of the West is youth and exuberance, and they're happy to be there, very similar to Memphis last year. I think Minnesota and Oklahoma City, Minnesota I could see winning their first-round series if they end up being the one. If they're the two or the three, they lose. Oklahoma City is the two or the three, they lose. I think Denver is going to get to the finals again, in my opinion, but it's going to be harder. I don't think they're going to sweep, sweep, 4-1, shit like that. Um, And I think the finals, I want it to be Denver, Milwaukee, because I love Dame Willard. But there's some there's something missing in Milwaukee with that connection. Like the Giannis Lillard, it's not working the way it should work, even though they're still really competitive and at the top of the East. I think they're the two or the three. Yeah. Um, but Boston here's my, here's my prediction in the East. Boston is really think- good, bro. And they're killing <laughs> people. Jalen Brown went for 44 and a 13 last night. He was balling. Tatum was terrible. Porzingis gives them a different you know, a different is uh, huge, bro. Horford and Porzingis on the court at the same time with three shooters. That's a problem. I think if it's Boston, Denver, I think he could go six or seven games and be a hell of a series. Here's the issue. Uh Boston and 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 they, they got a player that I like a lot, but can't trust him. He's like CP2, he's like KD, he's like James Who's Harden. Playing? Can't trust him. Porzingis is a guy I like a lot, but I can't trust him. He gets hurt every single year, and he's going to miss incredible, important games down the stretch. And I just hope that don't happen. But if it happens, that is a huge loss for a team that went all in to get rid of Marcus Smart and get Porzingis. And it's helped out so far. It's been a great addition so far. But if he gets hurt, that team is fucked because – I like that they have Horford still, but Horford is not the guy. And you saw last night, even though Denver won the game, Porzingis is at least a matchup issue for Joker and pulls him out because he can't shoot the three. He's in the whiskey back in the day, and Joker can do the same to him, but at least it's a matchup. Horford's not. Horford's going to – it's a one-dimensional thing. He's not a great three-point shooter. He fucking has to go down low. He can't go down low versus Joker. So there's a one-dimension that, – that, the, the Celtics Nuggets, I would love to see that in the finals. Um, but I just don't know if Porzingis can stay healthy the whole fucking year. And that's what happens over the last five years. Celtics have been really good with Tatum and Brown. But for some reason, they they fucking find a way to lose and, and choke it down in the, in the last minute. Ooh, choke it down. I hope that's not the case. Damn. Ooh. Yeah. Hey, so, hey, let's dive into some things. We got Matt's Monsters, and we have a new segment that uh, maybe we'll do with you called Coach's Cues. Ooh. Um, I'm going to break some QBs down, but uh, college QBs, and I want to get your take on them. But before I start there, though, I want to get your right take. Uh, what? We're doing coaches' cues today. We should do that on Monday and talk about Shador Sanders. Well, we already talked to Shador Sanders. He went at me on Twitter. Did you see Shador uh, win at JB? You saw that? I, yeah, and everybody – and I'm getting it. Like, I'm not on his – I'm on Shador's side. I don't fucking agree with this motherfucker right here. I think I JB's either. wrong. I'm with Shador. I'm team Shador all day, bitch. Cap. JB, hey, you all cap, JB. I know. I almost want. Hey, Matt. I almost. I almost wanted to say some things, but I know I didn't want to say it because of you. And and if it wasn't, say it, <laughs> Matt. If it was old school slapdick podcast. Uh, oh boy! Look, look. Everybody thinks that JB's 
like off off the hinge, right? This ain't nothing. He's so subdued and so nice these days. He's like Grandpa JB, and he ain't even a grandpa. Like he's so fucking nice. You see that shirt he's wearing? That's Jason, right? Yeah. He might as well have been the Jason of fucking podcasting and radio because he would just walk around and just knife motherfuckers. Yuck! 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 Backhand, foo, Chicago style, fucking you up. Yuck! 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 And now he's all nice and shit, and everybody still thinks he's a dick. It's unbelievable. Hey, uh, Tina. See, that's what's wrong with some of the women out there, you're, Tina. You're not hating necessarily. You just have a different opinion. She said he's yeah. young. He's handsome. He's got cheddar. Why do you hate on him, JB? He's got cheddar. Hey, 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 I, I, I ain't heard, I heard <laughs> cheddar in years. Like, I know. I like a Tina. I like a Tina, but a Tina, you're the reason a lot of women are fucked up in this world. Oh, uh, damn. <laughs> because, see, the number one thing <laughs> out of her mind. <laughs> the number one thing out of her mouth was handsome and cheddar. She said, JB, you need a hug. Well, I see you got a hug, JB. He doesn't need a hug. He needs his fucking, his his heels to the sky and somebody licking that AE. Ooh. I don't need a hug, Atina. I need a tug. <laughs> I bet mean, um, Atina gets some good hugs, too. You can tell by her face. She give a good ass, like, auntie hug. She do. She do. Like, grab the fucking, grab your cheek. Yeah. Oh, she JB, do. come here. She do. She do. But she'll, she'll, she'll wear your ass out, too. I can see that, too. Huh. Could you handle uh, it, JB? Huh? Could you handle that? <laughs> yeah, I, oh, yeah. Hey, I, your 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 podcast front porch, the smash or not segment, dog. That shit had me fucking rolling the other day. I was laughing my balls off. It was awesome. Appreciate that, man. I appreciate that. Man. I need to get on your show, homie. When when you... we gonna make it happen? I, I just saw your DM. I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit you up today. We can figure out that, a day that works best for your schedule. I'm not cool enough to come on your show. It's fucked up. Yes, you are. You more than cool enough. Oh, cool. Awesome. Hey, I'd love to come on. Hey, Matt. Yes. If your show blows and I get a bunch of money, both your shows are getting shut down anyway. Because <laughs> well, then I'll just come with you. What the fuck? I don't need to do my own show. Exactly. I'm going to buy out Smitty's porch show. I'm going to buy that shit out and sell it to somebody. Oh, if you buy it out, then she... Why buy out zero to 60? Fuck. Man. Or hold on. We can start our own fucking network and keep all the shows. Yeah. And get like... 15 shows and then sell the whole network. See, that's why see, that's the problem with these young cats, Matt. This is the problem. See, that's why I fired coaches. Smitty would have been fired because why? Smitty don't understand. Why? Like, we're not double dipping. You can sell it and have your homie run it, but you're not giving half me, give me half ass effort on this show and then go do your own show. Hey, you know, fired. You, to 60 and you think I'm giving you half effort because I got another show that I do? No, no, no. If the I porch is money, once I'm a saying, fucking week. No, no, no. I do this shit every single no, 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 no. day. Every six, day. Nine, every blood, every fucking day. day. Oh, I no. put my life on the line for this. Life. I die for this shit, baby. Life for it. What I'm saying is, if I'm paid, if ah. I get money and we get paid, all that other shit's gone. It's a network show, but you're not on the show. You're on this show. You and I are full in. We're in the studio, fucking boo boo. Like, nah, we're not doing the ports and all that. You got the ports. You own the ports. The homies do the ports. We're doing that. It's the main shit right here. All right, all right, all right, Suge Knight. All right, Suge Knight. He gonna he gonna grab me, put me over the patty. You ain't doing a Porsche no more, right? Hey, I will say, right? hey, go to zero to sixty. Yesterday we had ten year vet Eric Derek Wolf on. We talked about a ton of shit. Uh, it was pretty fun. So go on zero to sixty and check that out. That was always fun. And then on on Tuesday of next week, uh, comedian Brian Callen, uh, Shab's co-host, he's gonna be on the show. His goal in life is to catch someone home invading. And that's my goal in life. So that's going to be a major topic of conversation. If I could catch someone breaking into my house, oh my God, bro, that would be the fucking coolest thing ever. Like just the door shuts and they can't get out. It's like wrong house. Hey, <laughs> it might it might be coming, dog, with yeah. all these fucking Hamases. Hey, so let's dive into let's dive into um, let's get going on this. We got. I want to get your take on something, uh, Big Matt. Um, <laughs> Ryan Clark in the pivot. I don't like Ryan. I dislike Ryan altogether. I think he's you a fucking clown. Everybody. But he had a pivot podcast, and he uh, his podcast doing well. Shout out to all them that are doing well in the world. No, not a hater. But here's the issue. Arch Manning has been in the news recently. He said, I'm not going to go on the college 25 or 4 game. Here's what Ryan Clark had to say about it. Yeah, I think the difference between Arch Manning and a lot of those other kids is – Based off of what you see, based off of how you've grown up, your goals and dreams are different. His father, Cooper, 
was extremely talented, an extremely talented wide receiver who had a neck injury, right? But you know that your grandfather, Archie, is one of the greatest players that ever played for the New Orleans Saints. They just yep. had a bad team around him. He was talented. Peyton Manning is a first ballot Hall of Famer. Eli Manning is going to be a Hall of Famer after beating Tom Brady twice in the Super Bowl. And so his dreams are different. His cash flow is also different, yeah. though. Not only based on how he grew up and who he grew up around, but based on the fact of what he can make in NIL. The picture that stands out to me is at the Sugar Bowl for the college football playoff. Quinn Ewers, who is the starting quarterback, is sitting at his little podium to do media. And everybody's around Arch Manning. And my first thought was, it's in New Orleans, of course those people are. But he's still the backup quarterback. Mm -hmm. That's his life. That was his life at Isidore Newman High School. And the other part of it is, too, Fred Taylor, as great as he was, wasn't going to change the college football game. If people were going to play that game and want to play with Fred Taylor, it was because Fred Taylor could run a 4-2. Right. They're going to want to play with the Texas Longhorns and put Quinn Ewers on the bench and Arch Manning in the game because of his last name. Mm -hmm. yeah. Him being on that game is more important to EA right. than EA being important to Arch Manning. And that's the decision he made. Yep. And when part of your legacy is, no matter how you say it, Archie Manning, all class, Peyton Manning, all class, Eli Manning, all class, Cooper Manning, all class, you can't forget they orchestrated their way to the New York Giants. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't on the cachet or the entitlement that Eli Manning had built at Ole Miss. It was because of the last name because of Archie first, because of Peyton. And now you have all of that that's now on Arch Manning. The only thing I would say is this. I wonder how he balances his last name with being one of the guys. Um, Four two, Fred Taylor. I love Fred Taylor. He's an incredible player and should be in the Hall of Fame. But he didn't run a 4-2. Well, real quick, so uh, this is a good black people shit uh, moment right here. So black people, we often will like um, over exaggerate certain things. Like, don't take that specific four two like as like a fact. He just he all he means is he's they fast. are going to want to play with him because he's fast as fuck. Yeah. And he, Matt, me he breaks down to like the whites. Like we're not from the hood that we don't understand that. Well, and, and, he's, and, he he no. too, bro. White people exaggerate shit too. It's okay. It's not just the black guy thing. No, I, well. I'm not saying you guys don't. I just don't know because I'm not white. So I'm just I'm just letting you in the chat you're know that he doesn't mean four two like exactly. He ran a four two. He you're just saying white. Fred is fast in the motherfucker. Hey, hey so Ibani, hey, fix me real quick. Ebonics uh, terms. Ebonics terms. I'm 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 Ryan Clark. Just translate for us, Mitty. Translate. I'm Ryan Clark. Translate to the chat. All right. Hey, Fred Taylor, you you were great because you ran four two. That's why people came to follow you. Fred's hair was fast and a motherfucker. That's why all the homies wanted to come to school with him. Yeah, Thank cool. you. All right. Translated. So we cut that out. Um, For all you cracker ass crackers. <laughs> hey, Matt, here's what I want to break down. Um, <laughs> nobody's going to go buy EA Sports fucking college football game because of our team. Wait. I'm running you off the sticks. I'm running you the fuck off the sticks. I'll be Everybody your ass. Beat it. I'm running I was in the last game. I was in the last game. Y'all motherfuckers was fucking working. At fa I was in the last game. You, you were what? That's that's right. You were in the last game. I was the the, the last game, 2012, I motherfucker. And Chador and just slice up Coach JB the whole time, talk shit the whole time. Like, look at that arm strength and accuracy, bitch. Watch. <laughs> Nobody cares about Arch Manning on the video game, though. Ryan Clark. Ryan yeah, Clark always does some dumb shit and makes it about something else. We didn't. We're not getting. A, we're not getting a new video game because Arch Manning's on it or not. No one cares. Like, that's what I don't get. Why is he making it a huge deal about the Manning name and all that shit? By the way, this is the same kid that went on a visit and got a $200,000 one-day visit at Texas. So, talk about that. I'm sure that wasn't shitty. I, <laughs> like, I'm tired of hearing about the dumb shit. I don't really give a fuck about this whole thing, video game. By the way, they're getting $650. Yeah, that's that's a joke. That I got ten grand for Madden back in the day. They're only getting 600 for college football. I'll say this, though. Back in the day when I when it was out when I was playing from 2004 the five games, it was just numbers. 
You didn't get paid for that shit, obviously. No one gave a fuck. We were just excited. I knew number 60 on Colorado was me. Right. You know what I'm saying? I knew 14 right. was Clat. I knew 42 was Purify. I knew 74 was Wild. I know. People know. Remember back in the day, you used to be able to get online and find some dude that, like, went in and, like, put all the names, all the names and numbers and, like, height and weight and all the specifics. And you could buy the memory card and he would ship it to you. And then you pop the memory card in and it translates everything. And then the coolest part about it was you could take your NCAA team and draft those motherfuckers to the Madden team full on, on the next year. So you could like just keep the party going. And this is personal to me because, you know, I, I brought this up before, but I, I bring it up consistently because every day is new is a new day. But Clint Oldenburg uh, is the creative design like director for EA Sports and all these games. So he does all the Madden games. He's doing all the college football games. I'll have the football. I'll have college football two weeks before it comes out. I'm going to start playing it, get my skills up, run you off the sticks. I can't. He said it's going to be really dope. I like Madden. I don't love Madden. I think it's really fun, but I also think it's, I, I don't know. It's hard to explain. It's really awesome, but it's not like 2K, in my opinion, is the best sports game. It's really like you, I can play it all day. Madden pisses me off a lot. Like I find myself throwing the controller or screaming at the guy I'm playing. So I, I hope college football is different in that regard, but there's nothing better, nothing better as a college player or a young guy or whatever than going to like winter conditioning on a Friday morning and busting your ass and getting done like 730 and everybody goes and eats breakfast, and then everyone's like, we ain't got class today, right? Nah, we're off the rest of the weekend. All right, everybody, my house on the sticks. I got first game. Let's go. And it turns into like an all-day fucking NCAA tournament. That shit is the shit, dog. Beautiful. I'm, Beautiful. I'm going I'm going to uh, my best friend's funeral this morning. And, my, you know, I, we talked about this last week. Clyde Sorrell passed in his sleep uh, two weeks ago, and it's heartbreaking, but – I, I don't know how many times him and I battled on NCAA, but it's, I bet you it's close to a thousand. Mm. And like, those are just bonding experiences, bro. And it's something that I just can't help but think about. So it, that shit is super fun. And I always loved it. And honestly, I'm really, really glad it's back. And if Arch Manning doesn't want to be a part of it, who gives a shit? And I mean, no one's buying it for a backup quarterback. He's not a starter yet. And real, and to that point, real quick, JB, like if you you heard the passion behind Matt and like the the excitement of him wanting, you know, of how it felt to be on the video game, I had that same feeling. Being somebody who you know, uh, did, you know, don't come from shit, and then you go to college football, you earn a scholarship. That's already crazy in itself. You know what I'm saying? You're going to school for free. That's wild. And then you get there, and then you're on a fucking video game, and you're a kid, and you've been playing a game your whole life. That's huge. So, like, you see how we have that passion because of like where we're from and Matt's from humble beginnings, and it's a certain it's like it's a certain feeling behind it. I think to, what Ryan was trying to just say is that because uh, uh, Archie Manning comes from a different life, a great life, which was a good thing, and he's seen greatness from his uncles, from his father, from his granddaddy, from his he's been around this shit that to the point where being on a video game to him. Isn't that big of a deal? It's like, all right, whatever. Like, nah, you pay me $650, I would have just stay off of it. As fans, we don't care if he's on the game or not. We're going to play it regardless. Like Matt said, he's a backup quarterback. But I just think Ryan's overall point was that being on the game to him means less. Because, like, to a lot of people, being on the game, like, even if we didn't get any money, like, back in the days, we didn't get money at first. It was like, we just happy to be on the game. We're, we're happy to see number 95 on Ball State because I know that's me. I don't give a fuck if it's paid money for it or not um but some people like you know archie manning he's like i'm only he probably only doing it for the money so i think that was a bigger point yeah i think ryan clark's full of shit hey matt let's go i got uh let's dive into okay, everything i just said matt whatever i just yeah. said fuck it hey smitty we got a special guest right when matt walks off um he's gonna do matt's monsters right now monday we'll get back into some other things with matt uh, we got Sean King on every Thursday going on forward. Keenan Middleton's on Wednesday. Steve Kim, Tuesday, Thursday. Matt, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And Matt, it's Matt's Monsters time. He's going to break down his monsters. Of Ooh, sexy. Look at him. That's a sexy son of a bitch right there. All right, let's roll. All right, so Bailey, uh, throw up these, these numbers, and we'll, we'll start with Drake. Now, my first monster this morning is Drake Nugent. Just got done at the Combine. Didn't run exactly what he wanted to, but he plays center. Who gives a shit? If he's running a 40, his hands are either up and he's jogging towards the sideline or he's chasing somebody that's way, way faster than him. Uh, I think he's going to be 
a 10, 12 year NFL pro at the position number 60 for Michigan, just helped them win a, a national title and really solidified and locked down uh, the center position he was first ten, first team, all big 10 this year. I've been working with Nude since he was 15 years old. Uh, he's like family. And, you know, he, he went down and worked with Duke Mannyweather this year in, in Dallas for about a month and a half before the draft. And that was incredible and a great learning experience for him. Duke at uh, O-line performance is one of the best in the business. So it's always good to to get a little bit of a different uh, dash of madness there for him. And, you know, just watching the growth of 60 and everything he's been through, uh, you know, going to Stanford, being parts of kind of some shitty teams there, uh, but graduating and being an all Pac-12 player and then going to be an all Big Ten player. Drake Nugent is right up there on Matt's Monsters list. And, you know, hey, he's one of the two guys we're going to talk about this morning. And I just got to tip my hat to Drake and everything he's accomplished. So that's number one. Uh, you know, there's a lot of teams out there that need a center. The Jets, the Broncos are going to need one. Cushenberry's going to move on at about $10 million a year. So, you know. Drake Nugent's going to be out there, and he's one hell of a player, and he sure would look good in orange and blue. The second guy is Roger Rosengarten. Now, Roger destroyed the combine. He had a, he ran like a 4.8, 4, 4.740 at over 300 pounds. Valor High School product out here in Denver. Just an unbelievably athletic talent. Easily could have played defensive line in college, but made the right decision playing tackle at Washington. You know, he's got a lot to work on, but he's also so young and very fluid athletically. And the type of guy that just wears opponents out with his aggression and his work ethic and what he brings to the table. So, you know, Washington's got to have two, three guys drafted off of that offensive line that got him to the natty this year. Rosengarten's another great player out of Denver. Another Dungeon family kid uh, that has really overcome a ton of adversity to put himself in position to be another, you know, multi-year professional from the Rocky Mountain area. So, Drake Nugent, Roger Rosengarden, can't say enough about you too, man. You are definitely Matt's Monsters for this week. Uh, damn proud of both of you, and that draft check is going to look real good. And, brothers, that's why we fucking grind. Don't ever forget it. Look at Big Man rolling. God damn, that's a big son of a bitch rolling. Right there. Good shit. 9-2 at 320, that's fucking rolling right there. So, remember, go check out 0-60. to 60. Uh, Make sure you follow myself at 6 Year Academy. Uh, followed my co-host and producer, Bree Maces at Bree Maces 303. She does a great job of keeping this train on the tracks. Uh, we had Coach Prime on, Coach Mike Sanford, Derek Wolf on. we got Brian Callen coming up next week, Max Crosby on deck. Man, shit is rolling. I can't wait to be on Schmitty's show. I'll be back uh, to, to, to talk some shit on Monday morning. Can't wait. You guys have a great weekend. Stay blessed, stay fresh, and uh, enjoy yourselves. Oh, that's how you close out. I like that. Stay blessed, stay fresh, and enjoy yourself. Stay blessed, stay fresh, and enjoy yourself. We need to put a beat to that. That might be a good little, good little hook. Stay blessed, stay fresh, and enjoy yourself. Boom, 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 we, got boom. A, uh, we got a special guest joining us who's a Who? proud, long time, was on for a whole year with me on the show. Um, a woman? No. I thought it was, never mind. You thought it was Coke bottle? Hell no. Nah. I don't, I don't even know who this mysterious lady is. I I I, I don't oh, know. Yeah, she's a on. she's a fuck. I don't know. She's horrific looking in real life. Why'd you bring her on then? No, nah, so I brought her on as so. The whole yeah. story is. Give me the give me the full background real quick. Real quick. Whole story was I was talking to different people like Pat and other people, and they were like, "Dog, a female and you could blow up. Like it could be a real thing. You and a female talking sport. You know, have her." what do they call it? thirst trapping her titties is cleavage but she talks sports or whatever well she was tennessee based and didn't know anything else period and one day she we got into a debate just a regular debate about like great and i think it was greater or something the chat will tell you fuck they were still here um and the, and the bra just hung like she got like emotional and shit i just hung up on her <laughs> What? I just shut her down. Yeah. And then she just went batshit crazy. Her and her husband, who's like a cuck, whatever they call it, cuck or whatever. I don't know. He let people fuck his girl? Yeah, she all, she like a big OnlyFans broad. Oh, one of them. So she 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 had a sock. She got a kid. She got kids, like four kids or something. And a couple of her kids were uh, soccer players and they banned them because she's on uh OnlyFans. So she was on she was on Barstool, she made it on all these shows, and uh that's how she got kind of popular. And then uh, then the, the husband, like, 
Oh, no, it was a weird dynamic, homie. And I called the husband a bitch. I'm like, hey, listen, you're a bitch. You let, you, you let your girl get, you know, choo-chooed on TV. But it is what it is. I mean, it is what it is. I was like, it's time to time to move on. Um, I'm really probably your only. I'm I'm probably your best co-host you've ever had, there, huh? Yeah. Well, I started the show with my boy Spree, with my best friend you met. Oh, that's the I fuck with Spree. That's the homie. Yeah, we did that on, as the homies just doing it, bullshitting right here. We had like a little thing. But hey, real quick, we got our main man, uh, a fan favorite for a lot of you in the chat. Lives in Dallas, you know. I guess so. EA born and raised. Our main man. Clap it up for my main man, Chase Sr. Clap it up. <laughs> Chat Sports in the house. Wow. I ain't seen Chase Sr. since the pandemic. What's going on, Chase? <laughs> What's good, fellas? Good to hop on on this beautiful Friday. Let's get hey, it. Hey, you, uh, you in studio, huh? Yeah, in the studio today. We just got to get ready for free like- agency. Uh, walking in Dallas side uh, skyline. That's old school, man. Chase is moving on up. He got the new glasses. His hair looking. He got the tan. Okay, Chase, I see what you're doing. Always on the grind, man. So when I was joining you, had to fit you into everything that I was doing. So I'd walk to the studio, hop on, and now I'm in the studio talking with you guys. Ooh. Hey, that's timing. Timing is essential. Yeah. Uh, hey, let's dive in. I appreciate you. Last minute, we were just bullshitting on a. Uh, he, he sent me a message, a text, and I was laughing, and I was like, man, you should hop on real quick, talk some Niners game. You were just talking, uh, we got the Niners, everyone's cutting right now, It's and even though it's a $30 million salary increase, right, um, in the league. What's going on in uh, Frisco uh, with your Niners? Um, and maybe we could talk some Eagles here. I uh, appreciate you coming on. We won't keep you. What uh, What's going on with Ayuk? Debo's and mentioning about he's not off the trade block at, by any means. People can trade him too. They could trade him. I don't see it happening. But where are you at with the Iukes and all that stuff? Um, and and any other moves or movement you've heard? Yeah, I think it's going to be a really fascinating offseason for San Francisco. And if you look at the regime of Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch and how they've operated since they took over the organization in 2017, every offseason they've made pretty major moves in free agency. So I think that a lot of people are expecting San Francisco to stand pat right now. They don't have a lot of cap space, but with the salary cap increasing and with some contract restructures, contract extensions, I think they're going to free up some dollars and they're going to try to address some needs on this roster. And when you look at the team, they need some offensive line help. I think they've been exposed in the playoffs the last two years because they've ignored the center position, right guard and right tackle. And against Philadelphia last year in the NFC Championship game against the Chiefs in the Super Bowl, they got pushed around and they got dominated in the trenches. So I think they could look to address offensive guard, right tackle and free agency. Kevin Dotson of the Rams getting $16 million per year resets the market a little bit. If the Niners don't go that route in the free agency period, look at the draft for them to look at a right guard or a right tackle because I was just at the NFL scouting combine last week in Indianapolis. Smitty, I know you're a big Colts guy. And this offensive line class is extremely deep. And then you look elsewhere, they could use another corner. They could use a linebacker because of the torn Achilles that Dre Greenlaw suffered on that freak accident in the Super Bowl. And as far as Brandon Ayuk goes, I was told at the combine that the Niners have no plans of trading him. His agent is the best friend of John Lynch, and John Lynch was the best man in his wedding. And the Niners' hopes are that they can extend him, and he's going to be a Niner for a really long time, and they want to get a contract extension done. And they've invested so much in Ayuk. They used the 25th overall pick on him in 2020. JB, you'll like this. He was a Juco guy before he went to Arizona State. And when you draft a guy and you envision him becoming a wide receiver one at one point, And then you have to deal with some bumps early. You oversee his development. And then you see him turn into a second team all pro. You invested all that time in him. You want him to continue to be a part of your organization. And I thought last year he was a top 10 wide receiver in this league, developed a really good on-field relationship with Brock Purdy. He's a deep ball threat, great route runner, great footwork. And honestly, he's the Niners' best wide receiver, which then brings us to Debo Samuel. A lot of people are speculating that maybe Debo could get dealt this offseason. I don't think this offseason is the offseason where the Niners think about trading him just because of the dead cap number that comes into play. But just like this is a deep offensive line class, 
in the 2024 NFL draft, this wide receiver class is unbelievable. You have guys like Xavier Worthy who are running a 4 one at 170 pounds, and then you have wide receivers who are 200, 220 pounds who are running sub 4-5s, four 4-40-yard four, four dashes. So if the Niners want to think about trading Debo, I think it happens next offseason where they kind of see – where they go with the team this upcoming year, they have an extremely talented roster, an opportunity to once again compete for a Super Bowl, but it's going to be really hard to pay two wide receivers a combined, let's call it $50 million. And if you sign IU to a contract extension this offseason, that money won't really be a factor until a couple of years down the road. You get rid of Debo, you free up some of that cash, and if Brock Purdy continues to play well next offseason, He'll be up for a contract extension. So I think San Francisco's in a good spot. Obviously, JB, I know what you've said about Kyle Shanahan. The Andy Reid parallels are there. Four NFC Championship games in five years and two Super Bowls in that span. That's in a really impressive run. He just hasn't won the big game. Andy Reid in Philadelphia was there for 14 years, made it to five NFC titles, only one Super Bowl. He was looked at as a choke artist, but an innovative, creative, offensive mind. And now you see he's one of the GOATs three Super Bowls to his resume. I think Shanahan's going to win one eventually, but the pressure is certainly on because this Super Bowl window with this core is starting to close a little bit. I I know Smitty has some, I, and that's why I want to appreciate you coming out, all that insight, man. You're the best. I I was going to ask you, keeping Debo, IU, Kittles, and CMC, how do they do it? And then try to, if they are going to go with Brock as their guy, sign him. I, number one, here's my professional opinion. If they keep, Purdy as their guy, you have to keep Debo because he that offense is predicated around CMC and Debo. He's a slasher. He's a you can shovel him the rock. You can give him a reverse. He's not in a he's not the traditional outside X receiver that you're gonna one on one throw a comeback curl post to. He's the guy you get bubble screen, reverse, shovel pass, put him in the mix, wildcat him. You do too much with him. I don't think you can get rid of Debo unless you go different at quarterback and I just don't know where you are there I know you love Brock where is he the guy going forward and are you willing to pay him big buku cash which these the market requires now for Brock Purdy yeah and I hear you and a lot of people are probably saying Chase you're crazy why would you trade Debo Samuel I wouldn't trade Debo I'd run it back this year and I'd kind of have a last dance type of mentality for this Niners team because you look at all the players that they're paying right now Trent Williams Christian McCaffrey, Debo Samuel, soon to be Brandon Ayuk, hopefully, George Kittle, Fred Warner, Nick Bosa, Kyle Juszczyk, Eric Armstead, Javon Hargrave. All of these players Golly. are top 10 highest paid players at their respective positions. That's just not sustainable long term. So you lose the Super Bowl last year when you should have won it. You shot yourselves in the foot a multitude of times. You were the better team than Kansas City, in my opinion. You blew that game. Now you approach 2024 like this is realistically the last chance with the Brock Purdy contract extension looming to run it back with this core. And then next offseason, you're going to have to make some difficult decisions and maybe retool on the fly. As for Brock Purdy, this was his first full year as a starting quarterback in the National Football League. And he was top 10 in yards per attempt, touchdown throws, deep ball completion rate. And I think you have to look beyond the stat sheet for what he does really well at an elite level. Timing, accuracy, anticipation, having your good pocket feel, pocket mobility. I think Kyle Shanahan can do him more favors by letting him roll out to his right, roll out to his left, make some plays on the run because he's an underrated athlete. But within Kyle Shanahan's system, Purdy has to operate within the constraints of it. And that limits him to a certain degree. But Shanahan has to stop being so stubborn. He has to fix some of the pass protection issues up front that happen because of his system being what it is. And as far as Purdy goes, this upcoming season is a big one for him. And I like his potential future because I've seen it. Everybody wants to tell me he has a noodle arm. Well, he had the number one deep ball completion rate in the NFL this past year. He was number one in yards per attempt. So – that shuts down that narrative. Everybody wants to say he's not a good athlete. Well, we saw him make winning plays and massive plays against Detroit, against Green Bay with his legs. He took Patrick Mahomes to overtime in a Super Bowl when he got pressured 11 times and nine of them were unblocked. 
and nobody was doing him favors up front along that offensive line. And I thought he actually played pretty well. So it's too early to say, are you going to give Brock Purdy a contract extension? You have to see how he plays in 2024. And if he plays really, really well, like he did in 2023, that's what the market is. And you don't want to be in a situation where you're trying to find a quarterback once again, because when you're in that type of territory, you're going to float in mediocrity. Mediocrity is nowhere to be in the National Football League. And in the NFC, it's wide open. AFC is loaded with quarterbacks. But tell me some of the quarterbacks in the NFC who are going to be mainstays for the next 5, 10 years. It's open for the Niners taking here. And when you have a good coach, good quarterback, these weapons, and a good front office that can scout talent and put together rosters like this, Niners are still in a good spot for the future. And I'm a believer in Purdy because of all of the mature quarterback things that he does at a really, really high level. Hey, moving around the league. Go ahead, Smitty. You got something. No, I, was saying, I love it. I mean, my, my last little, I guess, little follow-up to you is um, you mentioned the system and Cal Shanahan's system potentially limiting some of Brock Purdy's, like, you know, his skill sets and his ability of, as far as what he's able to do. I would counter that, I guess, with a question and say, don't you believe that the system is the reason why we're seeing Brock Purdy excel at such a high level so quickly? I mean, you don't often see guys in their first full year of starting just, you know, playing to this level. You know what I'm saying? So, For like, sure. I, I would argue the system is allowing Purdy – to play this high level. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. No, I see what you're saying. And let me just clear this up. I'm talking about how Shanahan's system can go further in bringing the best out of Purdy and allowing him to throw on the run compared to just keeping him in the pocket, which led to a lot of trouble against Kansas City because they kept getting interior rush against him. The pocket was muddied. If you call some quarterback boots to the right, you call some plays to the left, and Shanahan does kind of that fake play action to the right roll left a little bit. But if you do more of that, I actually think you can bring more out of Brock Purdy. But for sure, Cal Shanahan's system elevates all of the quarterbacks. That's why Jimmy Garoppolo, who is just mediocre at best, played really well. That's why Nick Mullins and C.J. Beathard had success. That's why Brock Purdy has been able to be so successful where he's won so many games and has put up really, really good numbers in about a season and a half of starting. Kyle Shanahan's system is very quarterback friendly. I'm just more so talking about how if he changes his philosophy on pass protections up front, and if he leans into some of the strengths that are underrated for Purdy, and he lets him make some throws on the run, I think that could further help Brock Purdy and this offense be even better. Got you. Yeah. And we'll move. I want to get a couple things from you real quick for you. You get out of here. I appreciate you coming on. Um, see, I think Sam Darnold can do everything that he can do plus more because of his arm strength and stuff. And he, we've never seen Sam Darnold with a competent head coach, competent OC, or a competent roster ever. And but I don't think he's ever going to get the shot because of that very reason. I think we all think negatively because we've never seen him. He's had six OCs, three head coaches. Carolina and the Jets weren't necessarily the. <laughs> Great organizations when he was there. They were horrific. So I think they got a good – they need to keep Sam just in case something happens there. Um, Go into your Eagles real quick. Michael Lombardi, who comes on here uh, every couple months, he came out yesterday and said Justin Fields doesn't have any suitors, at least to be a starter. He feels his best opportunity is to go back up Jalen Hurts in Philly and run a very, very similar system that fits Justin Fields and get better. I was thought that was very similar age. You know, they're very around the same age. They're around the same class. They're very it's ironic and interesting take. Um, do you see anything or hear anything? You were at the combine. Are the Bears getting rid of them? Seems like it's a foregone conclusion. But are, are there any suitors? Because I've heard the market is dried up on Jimmy, uh, I mean, on Justin, and uh, it's, it's, it's interesting. Yeah, the thought of Justin Fields going to Philadelphia to back up Jalen Hurts is a fascinating one to theorize about and talk about. And I'm sure it's going to get a lot of Eagles fans fired up because with what Jalen Hurts did in 2022, he was terrific. He played awesome in the Super Bowl. He was second in MVP voting. I think he really suffered last year from having a play caller in Brian Johnson who just wasn't close to the same level of Shane Steichen who had a great feel as an offensive play caller. And that's so underrated situationally, game planning, game managing. He did a great job of 
calling explosive plays through the pass game, but then being able to blend that with running the football. And it's criminal how last year DeAndre Swift, who was a really elusive, talented running back and had his first 1,000-yard season last year with Philadelphia in his career, he's always had all the talent in the world, had two games in which he ran for more than 20 attempts. That's just play calling malpractice. And Smitty, you're a Colts fan. You know how Steichen goes to Indianapolis with probably a bottom five, bottom 10 offensive roster. And they go to week 18 with an opportunity to win that division and get into the playoffs. I think Hertz missed Shane Steichen. And I just don't think physically he was right. So I'm confident with an experienced play caller in Kellen Moore who has a track record of having top five, top 10 offenses for him to get back on track. I will say... Backup quarterback is a need for the Eagles. Marcus Mariota ain't it. And I'm not a believer that Mariota is an upper echelon quarterback in this league as far as being a backup. And it's funny because Howie Roseman has said back in the day a few years ago that the Philadelphia Eagles, we want to be known as a quarterback factory. And while they haven't had a long-term quarterback who's had longevity as far as success since Donovan McNabb, you think about how they've had success with quarterbacks, right? Donovan McNabb and some of his backups that came in under Andy Reid, A.J. Feely, Jeff Garcia, Coy Detmer, Michael Vick was really good for a couple of years, and he had some of his moments. They tried to go with Kevin Cobb. He had concussion issues. They traded him away. Nick Foles won a Super Bowl in 2017. If Carson Wentz didn't shred his knee, he was going to be the MVP. And then you go to Jalen Hurts, who in his second full season as a starter, he takes the Eagles to the Super Bowl and he's runner up for MVP behind Patrick Mahomes. I think you need to get a better backup quarterback. I'm not sure Justin Fields is that guy, but if the Eagles deem themselves as a quarterback factory and Jalen Hurts gets injured and you run a lot of that RPO and you want an athletic quarterback who can throw it and run it, is Justin Fields a really good option? Now, my issue with Fields is kind of the same issue I've always had with Cam Newton. Polarizing players, exceptionally good athletes, really good strong arms. But for me, and this is why I like Brock Purdy, the elite quarterbacks in this league are accurate. They throw a touch, timing, accuracy, anticipation, and the completion percentage for Justin Fields. I don't care about the weapons. I don't care about the offensive play caller. He was less than 59% year one, 60% year two, and 61% last year, and he doesn't always make great decisions with the football. Again, sometimes accuracy just comes down to accuracy. It doesn't come down to the play calling, the play design, or your weapons, but as an athlete who you kind of get intrigued by molding into a solid quarterback as a backup, I'd be intrigued by that idea if the price is right. Here's what I heard at the NFL Combine, is that the Chicago Bears want to draft Caleb Williams. And they're not going to have Justin Fields, who the locker room likes, and Caleb Williams on the roster. The only reason why the Bears have not traded Justin Fields up to this point, there's no market. Because Kirk Cousins is going to be a free agent, Mm. and teams are looking at him as the top of the class of the quarterbacks who are available. Russell Wilson is even meeting with the New York Giants, Las Vegas Raiders, and the Pittsburgh Steelers. That goes to show you that the market for Justin Fields is really low right now, because I think evaluators across the league look at him and say he's a really good athlete he can run he can throw the deep ball he offers you a dynamic package but the completion percentage is an issue and I think for Chicago if they don't draft a quarterback they deserve to lose for the next 10 years (laughs) because why would you take Justin Fields over Caleb Williams Drake May Jaden Daniels they are better quarterbacks than Justin Fields but I think a part of this conversation you have to reset the quarterback clock Fields is going into year four. You can exercise that fifth-year option, reset the quarterback clock. Bears should drop the quarterback so that they have that quarterback for the next five years. And as we know, being able to build a team with the quarterback on that rookie deal is what's so team-friendly. I I disagree only because I think you're robbing Peter to pay Paul. It's the same roster in essence. Their defense got in the top 12, I believe. Their run game is mediocre at best. It's because of Justin Fields. Uh, We're talking 140 yards a game. It's mostly 70 of of him. Um, It's like when they they drafted Justin, though, Chase, don't you think? Like, it's the same roster. They have no outside threats. You got DJ Moore, who's really probably a two on any other really good, competent roster. He's a one here, and they have no two. And 
It's the same roster. Why are we going to start over and draft another rookie and put him on the same roster you just had it four years ago when you drafted Justin? To me, it's like ignorant, but I get what well, you're saying. Caleb Williams is better. That's I get why. What you're saying. Yeah, yeah, Caleb Williams, saying. Drake May, Jane Daniels, I think are better than yeah. Justin Fields. Yeah, I think it's addition by subtraction. I I think Jalen, I think Caleb's a shitbird, but that's going to be a whole other thing. I, where are you at with the uh, Tua? Are they going to re-sign him and break the break, bank the bank, or what are they doing with Tua in, in Miami? I know they just signed uh, their receiver, Joe Jonu Smith, I think. Jonu Smith, they, they they signed him as a as a tight end in free agency, but Mike McDaniel doesn't really utilize a lot of tight ends. So yeah, I didn't, I didn't get that. Yeah, I didn't get ten that million one. dollar deal. Um, he's just kind of going to be a, a blocker as a tight end and. And they don't even no use it. I, I got it. I, this one, this one, uh, I, I took that like you did. I was like, why are they doing this? It's not like he's a Kittle or a Kelsey getting down vertical down the field right. to Tua. He's more of an inline guy. Yeah, uh, I like Tua at Alabama because I thought that, again, you know, he threw a timing, touch, accuracy, anticipation. I think those are big league traits that you need at the NFL level. But then he suffers some of those injury issues. And when I watch him now, I just think he's so limited. And I think that's a quarterback where the system does elevate him. Doesn't have a strong arm. He isn't as accurate as I thought. Doesn't do anything for me as far as like having a body where he can run, make plays. He's not dynamic in any way. So I get it. If you're in quarterback purgatory, you're kind of screwed. But if I'm Miami, I'm trying to find a different option because – if the system can elevate a quarterback, it can work with a couple of other quarterbacks. For me, why would I pay Tua Tungabailoa $30, $40 million per year? I know Mike McDaniel has defended him, saying he could be a late bloomer, had playoff experience for the first time. But, man, he just looks so limited, especially in a game against Kansas City in bad weather, really good defense where he just looked flustered. I'm not now, a big Tua guy. In New York – in New York, um, Smitty, jump in anytime. I know I'm Chase. Let me know when you got to go. I know you got to go. Uh, in New York, Russell Wilson's meeting there. Does that mean with with the allowance of of Barkley to chase the market and then buyer's remorse, I guess, with Daniel Dimes, what it seems to what they're having now. Daniel Nichols. What, you see Russell Wilson going there and them trying to move Daniel. I don't know if they can get out of the 160. I don't think they can get out of that contract with Daniel Jones. So No, yeah. I think Daniel Jones is extremely mid. Uh, I would have never given him $40 million per year. I think the team that makes sense Thank for you. Russ is the Pittsburgh Steelers. He's not the quarterback that he was with Seattle. But the Pittsburgh Steelers are built in a way where they want to play ball control, they want to run the football, and they want to rely on that defense. That's perfect for Russ because that's how he fared really well with Seattle. Legion of Boom defense, ran the football with Marshawn Lynch, they controlled the clock, they played that physical downhill style where they were just going to beat you down throughout the course of a 60-minute game, and you look at the identity of Pittsburgh – I think they could be a much better team if they just had competent quarterback play. They haven't had that. That's why I think Russ to Pittsburgh makes a lot of sense. I agree I like that 1,000%. Was- I think it's a seamless uh, fit. I mean, the fact that Pittsburgh was able to make the playoffs, and even be in, in conversation and have winning records with the quarterback play that they've had over the last few years, and basically with that defense lead, leading the road um, to even have just a competent quarterback, even like you said, Russell Wilson is just what he was last year. I can see Steelers winning 12 games and just being in the conversation and, and you know, to, to compete. And that's all you can ask for in, in, in uh, NFL. There's no promises. There's no guarantees. All you want to, you know, is a shot at the big game. And I think they can win about 12 games with Russell Wilson. With that defense playing at the same level, uh, TJ Watt staying healthy, of course, would be a huge factor. But I couldn't yeah. agree more. I think the Steelers is the clear-cut favorite for Russell Wilson. Hey, are you gonna? Are you guys in Philly gonna be able to keep Swift? Are you gonna have a lucky get out and, and have four million dollars and have three legit running backs, or is that done? There's a lot of chatter that the Eagles are interested in Saquon Barkley. I don't think it makes a lot of sense. He's older, injury prone, a lot of wear on the tires. But as a dynamic athlete in the backfield with Hurts as a pass catcher, I don't think the Giants utilized him enough as a dual threat weapon. There's some buzz there. I don't think they go that route because they've never really invested in the running back position under Howie Roseman. But that's a name to watch. I'd rather just go Swift. Younger, less carries, really dynamic, and he's going to be cheaper. Dallas too. Barkley now is heating up in Dallas. Like I think Houston Park. makes sense for Saquon. I think Houston mm-hmm. makes sense for Saquon. I, I like him with Harbaugh and out here in LA. That too. Yeah, I like that one. Uh, 
Chase, man, I appreciate you jumping on last minute, man. I wanted to just get you on here, let the crowd miss you, man. And the, and uh, and uh, I continue to hope for the demise of the 49ers as a Rams fan. And I hope you get there every year and lose. Hey, well, they've they've gotten there every year and they've lost up to this point so far. So uh, your wish is working out true, for baby. You. Right? Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm just fuck with you. Hey, man, Chat Sports, follow Chase Senior on Chat Sports. We're live and popping on Twitter right now. Chase, uh, appreciate it. Good seeing you again, man. You you live today? Uh, not going live, just pushing out a bunch of free agency content on the 49ers report and Eagles now on YouTube. So be on the lookout for that. Then we'll go live a lot next week with free agency getting underway. Hell yeah, we'll do it. We'll, to, we'll try to get you back on for the draft. Cool. Let's do it. All right, appreciate you, brother. All right. Good to see you, my guys. guy. Later. Chase. Chase Sr., clap it up. Clap it up, clap it up. Um... Ooh, I've been standing up for like three hours straight. My my hips are tight, my legs are tired, but I'm grinding. Like you really burn calories by just standing up. Literally, we sit down too much in today's society. That's why we're, that's part of why we're so damn lazy. Chase, what the hell? You to drink a beer before you come on the show? That is me. I gotta be with a size lab glasses. Latina be with the like. I mean, is she kind of like? Is she JB white? Black? She kind of hood like JB. I kind of wanted to call in. I want to hear her voice. Like, like, like I, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, you, you, yeah, I see what you, she a hood cat, you know what I mean? Like, got four brothers, was the only girl, always protected. Used to get in fights in school and shit. Used to go to school. When she was young, she had a, had a barats in her, in her hair and shit like that. You know what I mean? Had the hood ponytail. But when she got to high school, she started working fast food. Making her own little cheese, hair hair started getting done, dress cool, her woman body started coming coming to play. And she just she's always been a hustler, like whatever it was. Like she tried selling weed for a little while. It wasn't for her because she ain't really in the street. She was from the hood. She she's street adjacent. You know what I mean? So now she got a, a solid job. Uh I think she got two jobs. So she got a main job. She do something else on the side just to keep that money flowing. Um, she do got she got any kids, JB? One or two, you think? Uh, maybe yeah. I she got had a like, you know, in college or, or high school, played ball. The kid probably played empty That's, nester. She thinks she thinks she know football because her kid played. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. Look, I, look, 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 look. Yep, 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 hey. yep, yep, yep. But what do I know? Yep. <laughs> Uh, we're going to give out the phone number, Tina. We're going to give out the phone number. You can call in live. We're going to take some calls here in the second uh, in the third hour. We're going to take a break. Um, get me a coffee. We got a lot to discuss still on the show for the last 45 minutes. We got some uh, a bear signing uh, cornerback, their best corner, Johnson, to a $76 million deal. What does that mean to – Justin Fields. That mean he goes or stays? That's a big, big chunk of change they gave to a corner. Uh, we're gonna dive into that. Plus, my main man, Tyler Matthau, Honey Badger, reaches a two-year cool. extension in New Orleans with my Tyron main man. Matthew got a, a, got an extension? Huh? Ty- Tyran Matthew got an extension. Oh, that's yeah. huge! Like, to yeah, be yeah. this old in your career, to be a veteran, to get get an extension is like yeah. huge credit. He's he gonna come on the show. He's gonna come on the show. We talk quite often. He's a good dude. He's a dog. Ray Garcia oh, is now the new weather predictor. He predicts an earthquake uh, this summer. So uh, I've lost total confidence in him. We're gonna dive into that. Um, and uh, if it happens, though, if it happens, <laughs> I can't wait. We're gonna talk about some erectile dysfunction. Um, the specialist from ED, uh, I believe her name is Walqueria Cassini okay. and her 20 year old son have been charged for abusing children, dog. Oh, shit. <laughs> Unbelievable. We, gonna have, we got a lot. We got a loaded show. We got about 40 minutes left. Don't y'all go nowhere. Atina, uh, you got to call in for sure. When we come back, we're taking calls. We got to learn more about you. Don't be scared. Latrell, my brother, you going to call in too. And we got a lot loaded show. I'm going to go over here and make love to my girl real quick. Get a nice little morning. Make quick love? Get some orange juice. Come hey, right back and we're going to get going. Hey, look what I just texted in the group text. That's from uh, that's from Chase Sr. <laughs> hey, we'll see you in five minutes. All 
All right, all right, all right. Coach Chef JB is in the uh, bar tending mode tonight. All right, I'm here in the Slapdick Cigar Lounge and Studio, of course, and we got all these goodies, and I'm about to make a Paloma and show you the proper way to make one. Real grapefruit, a real lime, and we're gonna get down and show you all these great things today. Um, all right, first of all, we're gonna take this lime. God damn, I'm legit, ain't I? Woo -hoo, look at that. Wanna put a little bit on the rim, all right? And then you can dip it in this. Or if you don't like the gel, I don't, I'm not a huge fan. We're gonna dip it in that. Now we got our rim. I got the legit Paloma cups and the whole deal. Take some ice, throw it in there. Now, to your drink of choice, or to your strength of choice, I'm gonna put the tequila in first. This is actually a nice, cheap, clean mixer tequila. Much cleaner than Hornitos, I found out. So I'm heavy handed as shit. So I'm gonna put that in there. Gotta get you a squirt. Gotta get you a good old squirt, all right? And we're gonna take a little lime. We're gonna squeeze that lime in there. Bam, all right? We're gonna take a little grapefruit. We're gonna squeeze that real grapefruit in there. It's a real Paloma, by the way. You don't know about these Paloma. This is real deal. Then you're gonna pop this squirt. Then we're gonna stir it up. Damn. Woo! Bomb. Refreshing fire drink. Real Coach Chef JB. Paloma Day. Peace. Here we go. Out the oven. Just took it out, all that goodness. Put it on that skillet right there in the oven at the very end for about four minutes. Just to make sure it's thorough. It's about 139, which is a good medium. Uh, slight medium rare on the side a little bit. So I'm sure we'll let it sit for about 10 minutes. We'll cut into it, peace. All right, here we go. We're gonna cut that bitch open. Let's check it out. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Shit. Mm. God damn, look at that. You want to cut where the bone's not, so let's see where the bone is. There we go. So now we we'll cut that off. That bit's open. This is. Oh my goodness, look at that. Look at this. God damn. That is nice. Let me just tell you. I don't even have to hold it. It's so it's so fucking moist and soft. This is barbecued by the way, not smoked. This will cut your finger right off. Look at this. Ooh. Coach Chef JB. Peace. What up, what up, what up? Oh, shit. 
Yo, 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 what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Oh, shit. We back. Okay. We back live? We live. We always live. My fault. My fault. I had to handle some business. Um, if I give my IG, I might intimidate Coach JB. What? Why are you going to intimidate me, girl? Ooh, okay. Hey, listen. Listen, Tina. One thing about JB, he with the shits. He's been around sisters his whole life. I think I think his baby mama and sister. He done been around a lot of sisters. That's all. That like majority of the women he done smart or sisters. It's like eighty five percent sisters, seven percent men, uh, uh, three uh, percent Asian, two percent Italian. Like, you ain't got that. I like one one point five white girl. Here we fuck with white girl. I like white girl better than me. Look, ah, we got a lot going on. You agree with Russell Wilson in Pittsburgh? Uh, I yeah. don't. I don't. Why not? Uh, Why not? I don't hate it, but I don't love it. I think there's better options. I think there's better options for Russ out there. Uh, I like I like him and Devontae Adams better um, than George Pickens or whatever uh, who don't want to play hard. And then who's the other one? Johnson? Uh, Dante Johnson. Deontay Johnson. Deontay whatever. Johnson. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not really hyped on that r- roster. Um, but we'll see. We got to take some calls in the second, in this last hour. We're going to take some calls. But at first of all, right at the gate, do we want to do some QB coach cues? Ooh, let's do it. You prepared for it. You might as well do it. Ooh, that boy Kudu. Stay right here. I ain't seen JB in a suit since 2012. That one was clean. No tie, no no fucking bow tie, nothing. And you, you see how he leans to the side a little bit? That's that gangster lean. That's that. That's that. That's that Grape Street. That's that gangster. That's that Compton lean to the side lean. Hey, okay, hey, I respect you. You just earn my respect. Bring JB back on. You just earn more of my respect just now because I think you you really are you are what you say you are. That stance and the way a man stands and like carry itself says a lot about who they are. And that is, you just earn my respect, JB. Go ahead. I demand, I take respect. I don't need to earn it. Well, you uh, earn mine. All right, let's dive into this real quick. Coach's cues. Who's up first, Bailey? We're going to dive into uh, our main man. Now, this cat right here is this Joe Melton cat or whatever out of out of uh, Tennessee, Smitty. Um, yeah. Listen. I want to be clear. I don't want to get enamored with arm strength because we've seen the Will Levises. We've seen the big arm AR5. We've seen these guys. They don't equate. They don't translate. And they don't have a real future in the NFL. We're going to break these guys down. And I'm going to talk about who translates the best to the NFL draft as we get closer to draft and who actually is going to succeed all right so this is joe melton this is the kid um that is at tennessee who threw the football 62 miles an hour against a fucking wall on a gun okay um listen we know he throws the deep ball we know that he has an arm we know all those things that what i want to see is him hit his fifth step and throw a ball on time across the teeth of the coverage is what we just don't see in college football anymore. We see RPO, bubble screen. Why is he escaping already and rolling out? That wasn't what that play was. They are so gun-shy in the pocket now, Smitty, because I think we've allowed their athleticism to actually hurt them Mm. more than help them. See, I wish if I was coaching again right now, I would I would want to I would want to one plus run game athletic QBs and teach them how to throw the rock from the pocket. And then I would sprint them out. I'd roll them out because sprinting them out and rolling them out, Smitty keeps. And the NFL knows that that everything's a, uh, is action. Everything is a run fake action or an RPO, bad ball, bad hip, wrong ball placement. That ball should have been thrown up the football field. And, that is where I'm at with Joe Melton. I don't so my bottom line is on coach's cues here. I'm just going to give you a final brass tacks evaluation and say no. 
I don't believe he's going to translate to the NFL. I don't believe you'll be hearing his name in your home on TV uh, over the next three years. This next QB, Sam Hartman, who I believe, before I even show you any film, he will last the longest. He may not be the greatest. He may not be the most talented, but he will last the longest. He will be a journeyman, uh, a Fitzpatrick, a Gunter Minshew. He'll be a guy that can stand in there and take a chin shot because he's not Joe Melton talent. He doesn't have the athleticism. He doesn't have the arm. What he does have, though, is the intangible. See, that is these right here are feet, cap capabilities with your feet, with your eyes downfield. I believe he has a the it factor. He just doesn't have big-time talent around it. Gotcha. I believe he can be in the NFL for a long time, though, because the fact that he'll get rid of the rock, he'll throw it on time, and he may be a clipboard holder because he's not the talented guy, but I believe he'll stay in the NFL longer than these other guys, and that's just is what it is. He'll be paid for a long time. He'll be a one percenter. And I just truly believe that uh, this guy you'll see in the NFL for a long time. Does he start? Probably not, uh, unless something happens somewhere. Um, but he's not an uber talented guy at all. But again, I'm making a trend. I'm making a a, a a a bold prediction. He'll be in the NFL for a long time because the NFL needs guys like this. That's just is what it is. We don't have enough guys like this in the NFL. We're always looking for the next home run hitter. And uh, he could be the next Jake Browning. He could be the next, you know, Minshew guy that comes in and plays a whole season, Smitty, and has really, really good success. I, you know I what? The thing about him, like, the, the, the thought that came to my mind is if you were to combine cool. him, Sam Hartman, with Joe Milton, it would be a fucking a phenomenal quarterback. Why? Because all the intangibles, all the like actual the, the the footwork, the actual QB, the way you guys are taught, like Sam Harmon does that to a T, throwing it on his on his third step and like the, keeping his eyes down the field, moving around the pocket, you know, keep uh reading his his, his key. If you combine that with the skill set and talent of a Joe Milton into one, you have a Hall of Fame quarterback. Yeah, I like what Latrell Flowers said in the chat. He's basically just being a quarterback. He's doing what quarterbacks are supposed to do. Like, you don't see a lot of late balls. You don't see a lot of balls being thrown behind him. You're seeing balls that are thrown on time if the line permits, or he's ad-libbing with his feet, similar to what everyone loves to see and call Patrick Mahomes the GOAT. Well, guess what he just did? Everything Patrick Mahomes is doing right now in the NFL. Is he Patrick Mahomes' arm? No, he's not at Patrick Mahomes. What I'm saying is he's doing what quarterbacks are supposed to do to win the football games. So that is why I think he'll stick around for a long time. Drake May, the third QB on the list today. Uh, he has fallen on a lot of people's draft boards, uh, apparently. I don't trust draft boards, number one. I don't believe that draft boards are really inducive uh, to uh, NFL quarterback play. This is a horrible ball. Almost snapped his receiver's leg. This is these are the things I look at. He has fallen. He is a big body QB that has a mediocre arm. And usually when you get big body guys like this, you need to have a big time arm because he is athletic, but he's not Josh Allen. And he doesn't have Russell Wilson arm strength, Aaron Rodgers, Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, Burrow. He doesn't have the arm strength of those guys. And he's kind of like a guy that you're like, what is he? He's a tweener. He He's a big body guy that doesn't have the big time arm. I don't know how well he translates to the NFL. I haven't watched enough film on him. That's a horrific ball. I, <laughs> is I he just, Kenny Pickett? Is he Kenny Pickett? Ah, Kenny Pickett, small hands Kenny, I don't believe is very good at all. I, I, I'm really shocked that him and, Rit and Ritter had starting jobs last year in the NFL. I thought they were two of the worst quarterbacks I evaluated all season in the NFL. Um, This guy's not Mitch Trubisky either. Drake May is not. Mitch, Mitch is a great athlete. Mitch can run at least. You and know? he can throw. Mitch Trubisky can throw too. Um. I don't know, man. I'm not sold on this kid. At the beginning, I thought he was okay. Um, this guy seems like 
He's doing some shit I'm looking at right now. I'm laughing at. I'm like, holy shit, this guy's going to get killed. Um, not high on him. But again, this is what the college football quarterback draft is to me. It's a bunch of those guys. I I don't see anyone standing clear and head and shoulders above anybody. I think they're all very similar. And I, I equate it back to coaching and teaching, like Sean said the other day on our show, Sean King, like DA says on our show. I don't see the teaching, dog. And I see the athlete. I see the QB talent there. I, 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 I see that we are really, really crippling our QBs in college, and we're not coaching them up to be NFL products. We are coaching them up to save our jobs. And that's the difference in teaching, coaching, matriculating, and graduating, and educating. And I don't think we're doing it. I think we're doing it. I think it's all fucked up. It's so bad right now in college football. So next week we'll do Jaden, Caleb, and uh, – and a few, and we'll do three a day, and we'll go through it all, and uh, we'll break it down, and then I'll get into the NFL guys later. But um, it's gonna be interesting to say the least, Smitty. Uh, I don't know, man. I'm not sold. Hey, time will tell. Like I always say, you, you never yeah. really know. We had a few guys in during the draft. Where you're like, okay, I know Peyton Man is gonna be good. I know Andrew Luck's gonna be good. Like you had a few of those cats, but. You really don't fully know until they get to the NFL. You see how they translate. You know, we're all just guessing for being real because there's so much to football that's tied to your intangibles, your work, how much improve, how how willing are you to improve? You can't really read that. If you don't know the guy's character and where they're from, it's hard to really understand like the, the growth that that this player would have. You're looking at just the face value of the skill set and what you're seeing on the tape and things like that, as you should. But if that's all we have to see, there's, it's kind of hard to really know that a Tom Brady who's a six-round cat who maybe doesn't have the biggest arm in the world or isn't the best athlete was going to turn out to be the GOAT. It's hard to read that when you don't really know the heart and character of, of these guys. So time will tell, man. There's a lot of these, these cats that are super uber talented and athletic, but it, we got to wait until they get their opportunities at, at the next level to see how great they'll be. Yeah, you do. Um We'll see, man. I'm, I'm, I'm. Listen, it's not a science. If it was a science, then Mel Mel Kiper and all these dudes would be fucking uh, never miss. They would never miss if they're so good. So I don't think it is. I, I, it's it's going to be interesting, but I can't wait to break these guys down. Plus, when I get them in DV Sport, we can have a much more elaborate breakdown where I can actually circle shit and and do some things like that. Um, Smitty, real quick, I, the Bears signed a cornerback um, for $76 million, their best corner. One of my former kids is also a corner on the Bears, um, Elijah Hicks. Shout out to Elijah. Uh, he's entering his third year with the Bears. Uh, raised him, had him a, as a player for me in high school. Played with uh, Latrell, I believe. Um, what does this do for Justin Fields, though? I haven't heard anyone talk about it. That is a lot of money to pay a corner. In the NFL, when I understand the salary cap's gone up, but you are you have a quarterback situation going on right now, and I'm trying to figure out what this move tells your quarterback. Well, this uh, I think he already knows. The writing's on the wall. He's out of there. They're moving on. They're going with a rookie. They're going to bring a rookie contract. Regardless, Justin Fields is gone. Regardless, whether they're going to trade him, whether they're going to – he's not going to be the quarterback of the Bears' future, and he probably already knows that. They probably already – Voice that to him. He probably just didn't say nothing yet, and they're trying to keep everything under wraps. But that's literally what it is. And the Bears, I mean, to their defense, the great Bears teams have always leaned on defense and having great leaders on the defensive side. They, they let go of Roquan Smith. They didn't want to pay him, which I thought was insane. So now they have a lockdown corner who's young, lengthy, physical, uh, uh, plays the game the way it's supposed to be played. They're, and they're taking full advantage of it. They're, they're getting straight to it. They're not going to delay it. They're not going to make him feel like they don't you know, uh, uh, don't appreciate what he's done for the team. They're going to make sure they give him all the money he deserves right now. And it's actually a smart play to pay him now because you're actually probably going to save money. You know, if he, if he goes out, if they franchise tag him, he goes out there, he balls out again. And now he's a, he's all pro. He's all this, that, and the third. Now you got to pay him even more money. So I think there's a benefit in teams paying you early. You know what I'm saying? Because they're going to save money. The player's going to accept and appreciate it because it's way more than what they were getting on their rookie deal. And, and now everything, everything's everything. So, 
Yeah, I think Fields is out of there. I saw somebody, Leo Factor, says that Fields unfollowed the Bears on Instagram last week. I saw that as well. Yeah, I mean. He, he mentioned that on the podcast, too. He said, I don't, I, I unfollow everybody because I don't want anybody on my timeline during this time. Yeah, so, whatever. It is what it is. Whatever. Unfollowing on Instagrams is so – it's just I hate talking about that shit. I I unfollowed you the other day. I followed you back because I was like, yeah, it's probably a bad look, but yeah, I unfollowed you. Yeah, I I mean I could care less or even know. <laughs> I wouldn't even know. Um, all right, I gotta ask you this though, Ryan Garcia, over under, your over unders high. Does he have CTE or not, <laughs> Smitty? <laughs> All right, I try to give people the benefit of the doubt, okay? I try to, and I try to... Over under CTE. I I try not to be conspiracy theories, all right? But here's what I want to know, and I want to ask you. He talked about the Bohemian Grove shit. He did all that. We all gave him a pass. We're like, all right, well, then Alex Jones came out and said he may be talking about the truth and blah, blah, blah. But then I watched the Alex Jones thing, and the Alex Jones thing was like, ah, I'm not saying this is true, but I think he sounds like someone that's really desperate reaching out that has some sort of issue. Right. Um, now he said June 6th, earthquake. <laughs> Brian K. said cocaine's a hell of a drug. <laughs> He's given me a lot of, uh, what's my man name? Jones? Chandler Jones? Give me a lot of Chandler Jones vibes right now, dog. I'm just being honest. We don't know what Chandler Jones has either. We're just throwing out assumptions. But he's giving me those vibes, is he not? I feel like Ryan, something happened, bro. He was not like this like a year, even a year ago. Yeah, Ryan was like that so. little, Trudy's you know. took his own life, dog, and it happened like this. And Ryan was just that little kind of, you know, young kind of, you know, influencer type guy who would go online and show you his hand speed. Just like a little fun guy who people didn't take – Super duper duper serious as a boxer. That I mean, he knew he was a, a uber talented boxer, but like he didn't come off as the tough guy. They thought he was soft. He was an influencer. That was always like the the thing. And now it's like he's trying to like I don't know what he's doing. He's coming out trying to act like hard and act like he knows all these all this information that people don't know about. And he's he's just all over the place. And I don't know if this is like an actual sign of mental health. If he's faking this, if he's if he's on drugs, if I, if he's on drugs, we'll know because he, he has to get tested here. I mean, soon he has a fight April twentieth, so we'll, we'll, we'll we should uh, know. They're not they're not gonna. They don't test for street drugs. They're not testing that motherfucker before a major fight that's gonna make their fucking organization a hundred mil. Shit, you acting like motherfuckers ain't never yeah, failed drug tests before before major events. It's happened before, crazy. JB. You know what's crazy though? What? I think t- to your point to this whole point, people really think we're testing LeBron James in the NBA. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me ask you this though. But seriously, J- Smitty, come on! Before well, you even know, ask me, seriously, they tested Barry Bonds and Sammy Sosa really and all these them. fucking legends who drove the game. Why? why like, I don't. Why would but they do you that? really think? Do you really think they would test the face of the league and say, "Uh oh, he's done"? But we're, like, Adam Silver would be fucking crucified, homie. I and then everybody on on Instagram defending like LeBron about, ah, he just a specimen. Uh, shut up. Is that right? only tied to basketball? I do know he's a specimen too, but guess what? Specimens need help to be long to live through and go longevity on this thing. He's the goat of longevity for a reason. Stop. And you think it's impossible for him no. to be doing this without steroids? I'm not saying it's impossible, but if we're stat guys, like all you motherfucking stat analysts out here now, he's the only guy ever. First guy ever. I just think it's 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 bad on us as media to put out information that we don't know for a fact. We do not know that this motherfucker's taking any sort of steroids or cream. So us saying that we're putting out, we're losing credibility. Number one, number two, we're just fuck. We're just putting out. It's like a motherfucker come out here and say, "Hey, JB, JB don't like black people." Like, huh? Like, if Bust with the Boys hopped on on their podcast said JB don't like black people. And they threw out some some bullshit. Well, I know at this time JB did say this is Smitty's and this is it's just completely wrong. But they're just putting it out there because they got a few little pieces of information they're using. Now they're saying that to me, but here is an issue. Issue. we're saying LeBron takes steroids. That's just, that's, the other that's, way. That's, unless we know for a fact, or we got real, we got doctors coming out saying they they work close. There's nothing out there. K 
KG said the shit like on some joking, on some hood shit, just said it, and we took that piece of information because there's no news going on right no, now. And that's we not, blew that's that motherfucker not, up like it was the real deal. That's we had not, that's not. LeBron's on steroids, and we just He's not the it. only guy to come out, dog. Uh, stop, stop. He ain't the only guy to come out in the first guy. Here you go, D. I'm Jones. Speculation, it. D. Jones. It ain't speculation. You know what it is? It's having the balls to call it what it is. Barry Barry Bonds, balls, it if we know if it's a fact, it's cool. It was speculation with Barry Bonds and Sammy Sosa and Mark McGuire and, and Jose Canseco forever until a motherfucker had the nuts to say what it is. And when, it, and when this one falls, Smitty, you're going to see all the shit come out and they're going to be like, oh, shit. Every one of these motherfuckers is on something. Come on, man. Every golfer's on something, Smitty. Every baseball player is on something. Every fucking football player is on something. Stop being ignorant and blinded by dumb takes because we don't want to be the guy to say it. Be the guy to say it. So you're saying every professional athlete's on steroids? On something. I didn't say steroids. There's oh, no but that, 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 but that fucking There's matters. No like, are they taking steroids. protein shakes? That, that ain't that no. ain't. There's no more true steroid now, though. It's all been advanced, dog. Come on. Listen to Vin, listen to Conte, the motherfucker who invented this clear rub for Barry Bonds. He he was just on, I believe, Whitlock or somebody. I didn't hear the whole thing, but I know what he said because I seen the clip that he said. These cats are untraceable. It's untraceable. And guess what? The professional leagues and the commissioners want it to be untraceable. It's money. Why would you not want the best player in the NBA or the NFL to be the best in the world in your sport? Why would you want to catch him up? And make I don't you know. Up? It's happened for years. NFL, we've seen players get caught up for years about taking shit, get suspended. The coach just had a, one of our best a D linemen got suspended for six games because he had some shit in the system. Like, the shit happens all the time, JB. So, I don't know. To answer your question, I don't know. But it happens all the time. Barry Bonds is not going to the Hall of Fame because they say he claimed he took steroids even though he never tested positive ever in his life. You want, you so it, it's real? happened for years, so I don't know you why. Want, you want a real conspiracy take? Yeah, I do. Give him a real one right now. I'll give you a real conspiracy take. I'm on the show. They're suspending NFL and NBA and Major League Baseball players for betting and gambling at an all-time cliff right now to cover up the fact that they don't want to test these cats that are on something throughout every single league. Every single league, it's these cats are on something. Guess what they'll do, though? They'll suspend you for a gambling DraftKings $3,500 fucking gambling thing to keep the commissioners in the look like they're still disciplinarians. But the truth of the matter is that the enhanced things that people take to perform for your league is at an all-time high and we don't want to admit it. And this is coming firsthand from motherfuckers in those leagues taking this shit. Come on, man. If you don't think these cats are on something, you're on crack. And you need to be on something. <laughs> I'm not saying they're not on something, but that something to me is very important. It's such a broad term. They're on something. Okay, what the fuck is something? I don't like what, creatine, motherfucker? Like, what are we, like, what are we talking about? Like, what I'm saying that something, something matters. What do you mean? If something is steroid, something. Then something is, is something. Is it? Is it something There's illegal? Not is that what we're saying? It's not just the injection spinning in your ass, and it's not just old school steroids no more. These are th th these things have evolved into fucking untraceable things. I got you, but I'm asking you: Are you when you say something? What do you mean? Are you saying it's still? I'm, you're I'm saying an enhancement. You're saying illegal, I'm illegal enhancement. Enhancer. Okay. Some sort of enhancer, whatever the fuck you want to call it. It's an enhancer. It's a longevity enhancer. It's a performer. <laughs> Come on. It isn't a performer. Well, whatever it is, you got connections. Find out. I want to take that shit. It all, it all goes back to grassroots, though. And you, you are a victim of this, and you're probably a product of this in, uh, era. Creatine, you just mentioned it. Yeah. When creatine came out before, well, you weren't even probably born when I was on it. If you didn't drink a certain amount of water... You're fucking blowing your hamstring off your bone when you went out to run 40s and hundreds that day. Nobody knew all this. So we were fucking creatine, fucking powder, boom, boom, boom. And then come to find out, we hadn't taken enough water. You had to take four times the amount of water 
that the fucking actual scoop were was involved in. So per scoop, you had to take four times the water. Nobody knew that shit. It was drying our fucking entire system out, and we, cats were blowing hammies. I mean, I saw a dude take his quad off his bone, and we're like, what the fuck's going on here? Fast forward 30 years, and now you may not say creatine anymore, but you're, not, you're telling me that the grassroots of all this, when we started to create all this, isn't still around? You're crazy as shit. It's just evolved now. Now it's a rub. Now it's a cream. Now it's something new. It's no different. At the grassroot level, we started with creatine. Before that was straight up injection steroid. And now we get to clear the cream, the rubs, all these things. Now there's a drink they're saying. It's all this shit. We've all done it, Smitty, some sort of way. Back in the day before creatine, though, we had ephedra. Oh, my God. What ephedra was, was a fat-burning pill. Motherfuckers was popping them right before the weight room. Nobody knew. Homie, cats had their hearts jumping out their motherfucking body. Like hearts was jumping out of their chest because we didn't know. We were taking two because it was a it was a it was a metabolism increaser. So what happened was cats wouldn't eat all day. We'd take it, we'd work out, we'd rip it up, we'd get all fucking wired up. It was crack cocaine, homie. It was literally speed that was in ephedra that was not only burning the fat, it was fucking killing folks and nobody knew about it and i'm telling you dog this you saying, ain't no, you, no, you, so you used to be a crackhead technically yeah if you were on that shit hey dog i swear to god so many oh, my daughter my dad daddy that's passed away i got on the bench and it was it was uh it was like it was like 40 percent day but it was a high rep so we had to do like two we had to do a pyramid so we had to start off 135 warm up one fit 185 next 225 275 right now. 315, right? Yeah. Then you go back. You go back. You do two reps of 315 right. for 275. So it's called a reverse pyramid. Yeah. Homie, I was barely on 225 going up. And my shit was, I was like, what the fuck? Homie, I started shaking and shit. It was my second time ever taking it, but I took two pills. I thought I was the cool guy. I'm like, oh, fuck, I take two. I'm, I'm hyped up. Five in the morning, weight room. In college, this was in college. Shit, I never took another supplement in my life. And I was like, nah, nah, I ain't doing this. And I got all the big white boy Kansas corn fed. These motherfuckers is real. I'm like, what the motherfuck is that? Every day, dog, in the dorm, they shooting in the air. I, dog, come on, you seen it too. So we've all been there. Yeah. It's always something. It's just progressive. We're just I pro- personally never took nothing, believe it or not. Like, no, I, I don't believe you took it. I, I didn't drink, drink muscle milk, milk from college. college. And we know that it was taken. For sure. I didn't drink muscle milk till college, though. Like, that's I, 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 any of that. I, I was straight natural, like, no, muscle water, milk's Gatorade, way after and me. fucking lifting. Muscle milk's way after me, so I don't know nothing about yeah, it. Yeah, well, I'm just saying, like, to, even to that level, I, I didn't even take that shit until once I had the ball state, my strength coach, like, they made you. I, I was on weight gain, so I could, you know, four or five scoops of fucking muscle milk and shit like that. But yeah, it shit happens for sure. Um, anyway, man, can we take some calls, man, for like, I don't know, six minutes. You know, we're towards the end of the show. We promise the fans will take call. I know D Jones is gonna call in. Baby girl gonna call in so we can hear her voice for the first time. And then Atina's gonna call in as, as well. So take those calls to wrap up the show. And then um we might have a little sum to show y'all to end the show, man. We're gonna we gonna see. We're gonna see. Um 213-721-5528. Hold on, hold on. Keep it up, keep it up, Bailey. I'm gonna post it on Twitter. Um I'm all natural, baby girl, NYC, all natural. No surgeries, no steroids. I'm just, I'm just hard. Look, I'm just hard work. <laughs> I'm just hard work. <laughs> yeah, they already calling, dog. I haven't even, there's seven calls already. I didn't even fucking put the number out. Oh, wait up, wait up, wait up. What is, let me know when we on. What up? You on the Coach JB show with Big Smitty? Take a JB, shot. Smitty. How you guys doing today? Good, good. How Great. You doing? How you doing? So usually when you apply for a job, you need something called job experience. So please tell me, what do these women's coaches have experience wise in the NFL? Thank you. Good take. I would say this, man. Do your research first on them, see what their background is, and, and then you'll know. Next. Hey, what up? You on the Coach JB show with Big Smitty? 
What up? It's a, it's, my name is Hudson, man. I've been a member for about 14 months on the way home, spring break. You feel me? I got a question for you. You know, you accused LeBron, but did Michael Jordan take anything in your professional opinion? Um, yes. I'll get to that in a second. Corpus Christi in the house. What up? What up, what up, JD? It's TJ again. What's up? What's up? What's up, brother? Hey, so I have a I have a big question here. Uh so Max Prep always uh picks and chooses their national champions in high school, right? Yep. How come we don't have a national high school playoff? Good question. I like it. There's there's hey, a lot of rules for different coach. states. It makes it difficult, I think, you know, for that to happen. Oh my goddamn peak coach. What, what up? He said, he said, stop talking shit about my, my Chiefs or something like that. And then hung up like a bitch. That's right. You got the Coach JB show with Big Smitty. Yo. Yo. Hey, we are live. IG live. Call in. 213-721-5528. Grand Rapids, Michigan. You are in the building. Grand Rapids in the house. Grand Rapids, what up? What up, Coach? BK, Big Smitty, what's good? My Good. question got to be about my Michigan Wolverines. Do you think we break the record for players drafted this year? What's the record? You might. You might. We're going to dive into that. Burbank in the <laughs> house. What up? <laughs> what up, Coach Baby? What's the record? It's Athena. Oh, Athena, Athena, what's going on? <laughs> How you Thank doing? You. How are you? Huh? How are you? I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good, girl. How you doing? I'm doing good. I just wanted to know why you got to be such a hater on, on uh, Shadur. Is it because he's young, he has some talented, and you wish he was like that when you play? He got ch- oh, he got I cheddar, did. Tina. Hey, Tina, don't go there, girl. Yeah. Tina, don't go there, girl. You know what it is. It's a fact that I tell the truth, and y'all can't handle it. It's all right. You know, tell me one reason why you don't think it, he's him. Because he's not. <laughs> it's real simple. I really want to know for real, for real. I really want to know. He I don't think have anything. Him, he doesn't have anything that separates himself from being him. He doesn't have the big arm. He doesn't have the freak of nature athleticism. He doesn't have the pinpoint accuracy. He's not him. I appreciate you, Atina. Stay in touch. We're gonna stay in touch. What up? You on the Coach JB show with Big Smitty? Coach JB, what's going on, baby? What's up, brother? Uh, not much out here on this road. Uh, my question for you was, uh, you still have a relationship with the uh, offensive line coach at Indy. That's all I was wanting to know, man. Y'all have a good day. You have a good day, too, my country, brother. I love, yeah, I love how his voice like, is cold. Uh, huh? the, the, the black guy, the black dude. I think he ended up taking the, the head coaching job, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I don't. I don't fuck with him. What up? The real Coach JB, you on the coach show. Coach JB show, what up? Coach, what's going on? How you doing? I'm all right. You? What's good, gang? I'm good, man. I'm good. I can't complain. You got a question hey, Coach, for us? I'm trying to see. I'm, I'm, I'm down here in Atlanta. I'm a Falcons fan. What what we need to do? Which way you think we should go? Kirk Cousins? I don't like the Kirk Cousins move. Kirk or Justin Fields? How you feeling? Man, I appreciate the call. Uh, I like Kirk Cousins, but I don't think they have the weapons for Kirk Cousins. I think Justin Fields fits it better, and they'd have to run a little triple option in the, in Atlanta with B, with B. John Robinson. I, I like that move better um, just because of the younger athleticism and uh, the longevity. Kirk Cousins coming off the injury, he'd be a sitting duck in the pocket, uh, even though I like that NFL guy. Uh, I don't think they have the weapons outside besides Pitts um and uh our usc guy uh um, ho. Hey, what up you're on the coach jb show with big smitty that drop that call drop here we go arkansas in the building uh arkansas in the house what up you on with the coach jb show what up everybody uh, getting nervous uh, yeah smitty all right can we go back to a couple of questions we answered every one what was the first few though? There was one I didn't get to dive into. Um, damn, it was a good one. Ah, oh, they uh, hold on, not the Kirk. So we had the Atlanta one, Kirk Cousins, Shador him. Yes, there we go. Huntington Beach, California, in the building. Huntington Beach, what up? Damn, their phone's dropping. I don't know. Everybody, got, uh, everybody on the road. Everybody on the road calling in. I think they driving. 
Louisville, Kentucky in the building. Louisville, Louisville in the Louisville, Kentucky. What up? What's up? What's up, Coach JB? What up, baby? I don't have time for fucking retards. If you can't speak, get the fuck off the phone. All right, where are we at? Um, <laughs> I got to ask you, Smitty. There was a question, dog, uh, early on. That was. Do you think question. Michael Jordan is uh, on the juice? That was the question. And there was another one. Damn, these phones are dropping like crazy. It was Michael Jordan on the juice. You say he's going to get to that later. What up, what up, what up? <laughs> Coach JB Show. Yo, Coach JB. Yo. Yo, we, we – uh... You gonna rebuild the JUCO team? You said what? You gonna rebuild the JUCO team? Am I going to? Yeah, bro. We want you to build a team. I'm I'm trying to play for you. I hear you. You sound about like 25 years old, and you sound like you're fucking horrible. I'm I'm out of uh. I just. I'm... You what? You what? Yo, and I, I want I want Matt McKenzie at uh at uh Oman too. I want you guys to build a uh, big ass program. I want a billion dollars too. What position do you play? You know, what up, what up? You're on the Coach AB show with Big Smitty. Yo, yo. Yo. Yo, yo. What up? What's good? What up? Who is this? Hey, when you call in, say your fucking name, yo, what city you from, and ask a question. Straight up. Stop. I don't care about the word. Stop being a fucking retard. Shit. Fucking dumbass. It's his, it's his new generation. They don't know how to fucking talk. They be texting and TikToking all day. It's your Say your name. It's your generation. Nah, no, it ain't my generation. I blitz, bam, a blitz. Blitz. I don't care nothing about the fucking what up, bam, a blitz. Good to go, JB Show. What up? Yo, this is Eli from Atlanta, Georgia. I got a question for you, folks. What up? Hey, so, so when I was in high school, you know, I thought the AE thing was dead. It took me till I was 20 years old to figure out what's up. I'm asking you, at what age did it take you to figure it out? Uh, I was preaching that shit to my players young when I was a young coach, man. Shut, shout out. What up? Kansas City Mo in the house. What up? JB. What up, Sean Waffle? Big Smitty, Sean Waffle. What's up, fellas? What's good, Waffle Waff? Hey, man. Uh, so I'm looking at the cap space for the top 10 teams going from most cap space down. Uh, Big Smitty, the Colts have 52,000, 52 million to spend. Who do you like them going after? Appreciate you, Sean. Hold that thought. We need a wide out, I think. We need another weapon. Come on in California. What up? What up? This is Danny Sanchez. Who? Who? Danny Sanchez? Sanchez. What up? Daddy Sanchez, what's up, Coach? What's up, Smitty? What's good? I'm about to head to work right now. I just want to say thanks for being the realest show on planet motherfucking Earth. And That's doing right. Your shit. Talk, it, talk your shit, smoke your shit. That's Go right. right. I appreciate you, brother. Appreciate you. Have a good day at work, my guy. Burbank in the house. What up? Burbank? Hey, it's uh, Bundy from SoCal. Uh, quarterback play. The Wall Shanahan offense. Tight end. Talk. Okay. Yeah, I agree with everything you just said, and I appreciate you, man. Shout out to Burbank, and I hope you have a great, amazing day. What up, Watson? What up, Arizona? Hey, Oklahoma's in the house. What up, Minotone, 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 California? What up, Minotone? What's that? Yo, what up, Coach? What up, Smitty? It's McCoy. What up, what up McCoy? McCoy? I'm calling with another Patriots question, man. So Chase brought up that Dotson from the Rams got $16 million a year. We need a winner to be brought back. I know he's going to probably command about that much, maybe even a little more. Do you think they should go after someone else, or they got to bring him back to keep that whole line somewhat soft, solid? Thank you. Appreciate I say bring him back, man. You need protection. You need people who are going to be solid pieces. Bring his ass back. Pay the money. New York in the building. What up, New York? Yo, JB, what up? What up, baby? Yo, JB, you a bitch, bro. I hear you. I knew you was a troll. <laughs> <laughs> hey, why'd you hang up, bitch ass? What up? Victorville in the building. What up? What's up, JB? Big Smitty. JC, Victorville, California in the house. Hi, hey, Desert. Uh, what up? That's right. That's right. Fuck around and get hurt in the dirt, baby. 
Hey, yo. Uh, <laughs> Hey, uh, you think the Raiders are actually going to nut up and, and fuck with O'Connor, or are they about to trade everything away and go get a QB? Appreciate you. Appreciate hey, you much love. I think, I, I, think, uh, I think Antonio, won't, he want his boy, uh, Jade, I think. Hey, JB. Yo. Hey, how we doing, man? Good. Uh, my, name, my name is Brendan, a huge fan. Wanted to talk some Texans football, if that's cool with you. All right. Do you think? All right, so. I think they obviously had a lot of success this year, but I got to tell you, CJ Stroud scares me, man. He had a horrible wonderlick, horrible wonderlick test. I think they should trade CJ Stroud. Bye. Um, hey, I'm, hey, I'm sorry, bro. CJ Stroud's a beast. He's a monster. The Wonder League test means shit on the football field. It's not football. We all do bad. I did bad on that test. It, it, it means nothing. All right, one last call. We got an L.A. number. L.A. in the house, what up? L.A. in the building, what up? What up, what up, Coach JB? Chilling. Ah! Say your name, the city you from, and ask your question. We're done. That's it. We can't these, do it. These, these are your fans, JB. Tell me. These are your fans, JB. That's all I'm going to say, man. Like God damn. Appreciate y'all, man. It's been a hell of a show. We got in the show the right way, man. Earlier, we I asked JB a question. I said, are we the best-looking co-host duo, you know what I'm saying, on the scene right now? We're thinking about other shows, the podcast. And I said, you know what? If JB and I put a suit on, it would change the game. I don't know if we still got the picture of JB with that suit on earlier, but – if we had so look at JB right now, clean in the muffler, clean as a whistle. He got the gray with the black. He got the gangster lean to the side. He ain't even got the jewelry on. No, hey, show him how your boy like look. Like show him how your boy look with a suit on, cause I, cause I throw that shit on sometimes too. You know what I mean? I don't do it a lot, but ooh, <laughs> the velvet. I got the turtleneck with the two chains and the watch and the cigar lamp. <laughs> So all I'm saying is we the number one best looking co-host duo in the game right now. Point blank, period. I'm just letting y'all know that right now. And by the way, that's different between black people shit and white people shit suits. I have, but I did have some black people shit kicks on because I keep the Stacys on. Stacy Adams. <laughs> we don't know about no Stacy Adams. Yeah. I got the Stacys on. You don't know about them. You didn't see, couldn't see the Stacys down there. Um, but. We don't eat fast food around here at Tina. We don't do it. So shout out to Tina for calling. Um, she a real one. She ain't hey, scared. So far, you've heard Lucy call in as a woman. You've heard a Tina call in, I think. And there's another woman Lucy, called. Lucy called in. Lucy called in. I know. I said that. Another, and then uh, and then like a hood rat called in from like Texas. You, yeah, you, that don't count. I forgot her name. Uh, like you need Chris to call in. Jada Ben. Yeah. She's been scared to call Quia, in. Quia called in. She's not a member. She just called in. You called her name out quick. You knew right away. Oh, you said, Shaquia, what up, girl? Out of the three women's voices, who had the sexiest? Let me see. We had Lucy. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to remember the, the voice from yesterday real quick. We had Lucy. It was Lucy Atina. Who's the third one? Lucy Atina. It was Shaquia. It was a hood rat out of Texas. Shaquia. Oh, I remember you said Shaquia. The voice was kind of cool. <laughs> Why are you <laughs> Why are you laughing, JV? <laughs> I plead the fifth. <laughs> oh, Joanna called from Topeka, Kansas. That's who it was. Joanna man? I don't know. <laughs> hey, D Jones said I T and Tina had that voice on her. See, I T and Tina, like, Tina type, she'll bake you some cookies or some cinnamon rolls. She'll put your feet up under the pillow, let you stretch your legs out, and she's going to make sure you're comfortable as hell. It's warm in her house. She's going to have a TV on. She's a caterer. If she fuck with you, she's going to cater to you. You know, Tina's more the old school type. You know what I mean? Lucy got that. Yeah, Lucy had that little, like, Lucy had that. Um, um, I, I like, bet you baby girl got sexiest voice. That, that's our that's our number one girl we know the deal. Uh, baby girl ain't called it. I, I think baby girl got that East Coast, you know, like that gangster voice. Boy, heck, shout out to Hector. That's she the Puerto Rican though, and that Puerto Rican's got that voice. So I shout out to Hector. That's my assumption. But uh, listen, 
assumptions make an ass out of you and me. She's never called in. So, I, I mean, we can assume she got that type of little voice, that East Coast 90s, chewing on, smacking on gum, big that, that, earrings. That, 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 uh, I don't know. What's her name? What's my, Rosie Perez. Lopez. Rosie Perez. Rosie Perez, I mean, yeah. Yeah. You, I mean, I don't fucking know, man. He's a fucking dickhead, you know? Why the fuck did he come over here, you dickhead? And like, that, that's all East Coast people say is dickhead all the time. They smack him with their gum right there. Big ass Dang. hoops and, and cigarettes. Yeah, Jada got that ratchet voice because she got that go go. <laughs> hey, y'all, pound that like button, subscribe. If you're not a member, become one. Me and JB gonna be in a Discord. He's back. I'm bringing JB back to Discord immediately after this show. We're dropping exclusive information in the Discord. So pull up. We are gonna be there and let's turn up. Let's do it. Shout out to Hector, man. Letting letting it be known. You know what I mean? Hector, Hector, Hector. Hey, shout out to everybody, man. We'll be back Monday. Stay tuned to the show during the weekend. We got a lot of videos dropping, a lot of a lot of shit. Jazz, fuck your knows, job. Call in next time. If anybody knows how to operate Twitter live during the show and wants to post live clips for us, holler at us. Holler at us. Uh, we need a guy. We had a guy drop out on us. So we need a guy. Shout out to everybody else. <laughs> We'll see you Monday, God permitting, and uh, much love to everybody. Pound that like, subscribe, become a member. We'll see you Monday. Peace! Issues get pressed so past it, don't get sacked like bags and baggage. Smitty and Jason Brown killed the ass a rap. We want the game.